Absolutely. I like your optimism there, no safety car. What oh. do you think, Mark Scaife? We in for a few safety cars this afternoon? I, I think at least a couple, Jess. And I think the thing about it is, and, and everyone's been saying it, the new surface has made it hard to drive on. The cars are twitchy and hard to drive. When you stick a full load of fuel in them, it makes that harder. And the little mistake, that little mistake we saw Thomas Randall, for instance, earlier today, the smallest mistake has massive consequences here. So for sure, safety cars, unbelievable. Yeah. It, further to that point, with the new surface, it's taken the two days of practice for a, a racing line to kind of come into groove for these drivers. So if you're a couple of inches offline, yep. it's going to be really slippery and really doing. We saw that with Thomas Randall, you say. So I guess the margin for error is very, very low. So safety cars, how does that play into the strategy then for this afternoon? Well, what it does, safety cars will play in for Shane Van Gisbergen because he's got to make, he's got to make gains off the start. He's then got to make really good calls in terms of strategy for clean air. But safety cars bring him back to the field each time. So if you're in that camp, they'll be looking for safety cars for sure. The other guys, they don't want them. If you've got a good start and you get off the line well, so Cam Ward Scott Pye, that'll be an interesting battle down to the first corner. Because Scott Pye is very, very good off the start, Jess. And one of the things that you've got to deal with here is pole positions on the left-hand side. It's actually on the dirty side of the track. So getting off the line is going to be crucial. It's been really difficult to recondition so far this weekend, Jack, with the track evolving. Everyone has been talking about just reprogramming that muscle memory. And we haven't had a lot of long running. So yeah. what do you want in a race car this afternoon? And how do you give yourself some flexibility with that? Yeah, it's been interesting watching the drivers in practice and also listening to the teams and drivers debriefing and whatnot. Because I actually think they don't know what they need. Because they haven't done long enough runs, they've simulated in sort of shorter run conditions, whether it be six or eight laps, but this is over 70 laps, this race, so it's uncharted territory. So, first of all, you need something that looks after its tyres, obviously, in this hot weather. If the tyres get too hot and sort of blow off is the term we use, they lose a lot of grip and then, you you know, you will lose a lot of car speed. So, you need to look after the tyres, but you need to be able to manage the car. You need to be able to place it where you want to and not make mistakes, because when there's little margin for error, if you've got a car that's on a knife edge, you're going to make a mistake really, really quickly. So, this is where they earn their money, you know. They paid big dollars, a lot of these drivers, to really put on a show, and that you know, the best drivers in Australia. So we're looking forward to seeing how they all tackle it. Yeah, speaking about hot, spot, hot spots to make mistakes, turn eight has to be the focal point for that, doesn't it, Mark? We've already seen a couple of big moments there. Thomas Randall earlier today in practice three. We saw uh, Macaulay Jones also in the fence there. Is that uh, where the first accident's going to be? 100%. I mean, and I think the two areas you've got to talk about, Jess, is turn one and turn two. So getting off the line and getting through the first chicane, there's always drama there. And as you lead up into Wakefield Street at turn four, there's always the concertina effect of the cars firing up into that corner. And then after that, when everyone sort of half settles down, turn eight is the key. Because in this race, and I'm not joking, I'm sure Jack would agree, in 78 laps, there's probably 15 or 20 times that you get through turn eight, you go, whew, gee, I'm glad I got through there. Got away with it. Because uh, seriously, that's how close it is to crashing. Oh, absolutely. And I was listening to Brody Kostecki and Will Brown debriefing, and they talk about turn eight because it sets you up for turn nine, which is one of the critical passing opportunities on this racetrack. And they're saying, you know, the ultimate lap speed around here, the car's not great at turn eight, but to make it pass into turn nine, you need it to be good at turn yep. eight. So there's going to be sacrifices around other parts of the track to make sure you're as fast as you could possibly be through turn eight. So we get to lap 70. How do you manage yourself? <laughs> you don't talk to the pitch. You ask the guys not to tell you anymore. But I, actually, I used to always say, don't tell me how many laps until there's 25 laps to go, which is basically like a stint, because you just can't do it, Jess. It, this is going to be absolutely brutal. There's, there's no worse feeling when you're, you know, you're half tired already and you heat, you heat exhaustion, and they go, oh, "There's 30 laps to, go, you know, yeah. 40 laps to go." You're Stop thinking, it. "Oh no, Stop that's it. not great." And then someone comes over the radio and says, "Don't forget, we've got to do it all again tomorrow." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So quickly, your tips. Who do you think is going to win race 33 of the championship this afternoon? I'm going to go with Cam Waters. Okay, okay. Jack Perkins. Well, I was going to say Cam Waters as well, but we can't go the same. So let's go Shane Van Gisbergen from Rear of Grid. Oh, I like it. You're looking for the comeback here. Well, we're going to take a really quick break. When we come back, we'll find out can Shane Van Gisbergen make his way through the field here at the Adelaide 500? Uh, race control just stopped them from running. This is fairly hostile. They must have missed out by seconds. How brave do you need to be here? Oh, a huge amount of curb. It's hot, hard work for Cam Waters. This and go. Perfect release from the top of the key. Go. One step closer to the big ring.
Exterior, Los Angeles. Visitors break into a big musical number. You have another idea? Cut to a relaxing spa. Not a spa, but fun. Cut to nature and wildlife. Not that type of wildlife. This script is taking a turn. I'll have mine called Niña, por favor. Ah, the perfect ending. prepared for life's ups, downs, and up-agains with Boopa. Get up to 10 weeks free when you join Boopa on eligible products. Plus, we'll waive the two and six month waiting periods on extras. Search Boopa 10 weeks free today. Boopa, because life happens. seen it all from the tangles at turn one. Oh, Jason Bright over and over and up and into the wall. The battles between the concrete barriers. This is fantastic. Oh, oh, they run. The Scott Scott is is back. And Scott McLaughlin puts one on the jam. <laughs> Just put her in first, get some jam. <laughs> to the terror of turn eight. Oh, oh, great 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 A stunning season. for the supercar season finale. There is not a bigger, more consequential stage on which to finish the year. The fans have turned out in force here in Adelaide to enjoy one of the... We'll be crowning our 2022 champion here tomorrow, but we can't wait to see what he can do from last on the grid. It's not a place we usually see Shane Van Gisbergen start a race, but we are in for one hell of a show this afternoon. Jess Yates alongside three-time Supercast champion Scott McLaughlin here on the grid. Just soak up the energy, Scotty. Have you missed this just a little bit? Oh, don't worry. I do miss it a little bit. starting from the pole position this afternoon. It's his 10th of the season, Scott Pye, alongside him. Talk us through the start. What will they be looking for and how do they get through the first sector cleanly? Look, ultimately the pole position car is on the dirty side of the track. So the, the clean side is actually grid number two. So Scott can have a really good chance to get in front of Cam. Cam's going to try and stop that and check out from the first sector. It's going to be really, really exciting. Now some breaking news a little earlier here today. David Reynolds excluded from the top 10 shootout for running too much re-wing, which means he'll start from 10th. How does he play into the game this afternoon? Because he's had great pace all weekend. Yeah, his car's been fast all weekend. He was P3, I think, after that, and uh, unfortunately got, starting from 10th. But uh, Davey, Davey will come back through. It's, uh, you know, those cars are fast. They've been fast on street circuits all year. So I, I don't uh, The Grove Racing team are going to be fine. Who's your tip to take this one out this afternoon, Scott? Uh, Cam's looking pretty good. Maybe look back at my old friend Anton Di Pasquale. It's going to be an exciting race, and the fans, as I said, have turned out in force here this afternoon. Disappointed, and it's not just the show on track that's been exciting. We've had concerts, we've got an air show. It is all happening here on the streets of Adelaide. Couldn't have
fast for better weather, hitting a top of 31 degrees here today, which means it's going to be hot, heavy work for our supercars drivers. They're going to earn their money, that is for sure. All right, to get all the critical race facts now, let's head to Neil Crompton in the Hino Hub. Jess, war has broken out above us and it's about to break out on our racetrack and it's toasty out there. We're in for some action this afternoon. We'll check it all out in the Hino Hub to put in perspective all of the key elements of the day. We've got a 3.2k 14 turn racetrack, 250 kilometres of racing and 78 laps around this awesome place. How good it is to be back since 2020. 23 seconds to transit through the lane plus fuel and tyres. The fuel is the thing that covers you. Two compulsory stops in the regulations. You can take your first stop from the commencement of lap number five. The fuel capacity in a supercar is about 110 usable litres. Per tank, you're going to get about 38 litres out of it. That's your fuel burn on average per lap, which means that you can fill up and get to the end of the race from around lap 41. It's a rubbery figure because things have been changing throughout the weekend as the track grips up, the lap speed changes, the fuel consumption changes, and that's why in practice three earlier today, quite a few people stayed out there for some longer runs. That's how long it's going to take to refuel the car up from empty, if that's the case. Now, here are the things that really matter that we need to focus on for this afternoon. And I alluded to it right at the beginning of this Hino Hub description. Physicality. It is stinking hot out there. Summer has started here in Adelaide. It's absolutely beautiful. Great in shorts, great in a T-shirt, a little bit tougher in a race car. Unforced errors on a racetrack like this is really critical, and it's a place that's known for it. We've already seen this weekend a number of drivers making mistakes. We've got a brand new racetrack surface for the best part of about 80, 85% of the lap. It's changing and evolving as the weekend unfolds. It's gripping up. It's challenging to set the car up for it. It will continue to change throughout the race. The smart engineers and the strategists are going to have to read that very, very carefully. End of the championship season. Scores to settle. Drivers are on the move. They don't care what the point score says. They know that Shane is going to win. The rest of them couldn't care less. It will be vigorous out there. It will be on. Safety car, fair chance at this kind of a circuit that you're going to see the BP Ultimate Safety Car. We rate it as a medium. I reckon it's going to be up a bit today. It is gorgeous out there. 31 at the moment. We're shooting for 33. It's going to be a ripping race. Neil, and no understatement there, it is absolutely fantastic here on the grid. Uh, Peter Malinowskis, the South Australian Premier, made two big promises in the last couple of years. One, that he would bring this event back, and two, that they would get it done this year, and he's delivered on both. Premier, you must be really proud. Why was it so special to you to bring back the Clipsal 500? Well, have a look around, Barretts. This is what the people wanted, and, um, and we are, we're, just so, we're just so proud of the team. They put in a massive effort, and... You know, I'm, I'm lucky I get to make the decision, but there's a lot of people who have to make it happen, and Mark Warren and Andrew Daniels and their whole team, this is special. It, it's better than ever. I think everyone who walks in here says, hey, you've done it better than it's ever been done before. Yeah, well, I, well, I said to the guys, I said, look, you've got half the time that it usually takes, but we can't just bring it back. It's got to come back sharper and crisper and fresher than ever before, and anyone that comes down and has a look around and sees the infrastructure, they'll know that investment's been made, because this isn't just about this year, Brett. This race is back for good, and we're going to make sure we invest into the future to, so it's the success it should be. Premier, how good was it to walk in this morning and see these huge crowds here? Look, the crowds are massive, and we're seeing more people come out. I could say to the people in the sun that the shade's coming next year. They flogged it off, so they'll be more of that, but, um, the, the, <laughs> but look, the, 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 this is the people's race and it's not just supported by South Australians, it's supported by people around the country and every hotel's full, every restaurant's chock-a-block and that's what makes our state buzz. So the, the state is alive and well and we're expressing ourselves to the rest of the country that the state's got a story to tell and it's on show here today. Premier, congratulations. You've not only made people in Adelaide and South Australia happy, you've made all of Australia happy. Thank you very much. Great work. I appreciate the support. Thanks, Brett. Right. Cheers. OK. Let's get to your welcome to country. Here's Major Moogie. On, on behalf of my uh, mother's people, the Ghana people, I'd like to invite you all here to this ceremony this afternoon. Got 
Whilst it's a lot different, there's a lot the same. But I'll tell you one thing that's really different we haven't picked up on is we're actually here at the start of December. This is summer. For so many years, we've been coming here around sort of the start of March. This is hotter than we're used to. This new tarmac down here, you can see it's black. You can feel the heat radiating off it. In our cars today, I reckon the result of all of that's going to be frustration, right? So inside the cabin, we're probably going to see 50 or 60 degrees centigrade cabin temperatures in here. In here on the floor, we've got hot exhaust just in front of that, coming up through the pedals. Drivers always leave Adelaide with burnt feet. Our engine temperatures, the water's going to be running up around boiling. The transaxle, the diff temper, temperature, that's going to be up around 130 degrees centigrade. So here's my prediction for today. I reckon we're going to see mistakes. We've seen frustrated drivers all weekend. They haven't been able to get a rhythm going on this new surface. You start to make a little bit of a mistake. You dehydrate. You start to get frustrated. You start to make more mistakes. I actually reckon this is going to happen. A couple of safety cars as a result of those mistakes. I mean, that bloke right down the other end, Shane Van Gisbergen, will start to make hay. I reckon what he's going to do is get in early, He's going to fill up his car and he'll run long in clear air while the rest of the pack's up here. Then if he gets a safety car, he's back in the game. Now, these guys want to spoil the Holden party this weekend. As I said, I'm a Ford guy. They know it. I'm with this badge. But this weekend, sorry, buddy, I'm with Holden. I would love to see Holden win this weekend. So, I tell you, Pi... Chazzy Mostert's back there, he's half a chance, but I just think for drivers this weekend, this is going to be a tough, tough gig. In fact, Cam Wards, if you look across there, Mitch, maybe we can point it out. See that box over there? So they're going to put dry ice in there in a minute. And the reason they leave it to the last minute, if they put it in too so soon, it freezes up the fluid. There it is there that goes through his chest. You can see there the little fluid little duvalacas there. So there he is, there he is there. OK, so they freeze those up, then he's in a world of pain. So uh, best of luck, pal. It's very timely that, Cam, uh, that Mark Larkin was talking to Cam Waters because now we'll have a chat to him. Cam, nice lap in the shootout. It's going to be a hot old afternoon, so you've put yourself in the right spot ahead of this one. Uh, yeah, got um, half the job done. Just need to get, obviously, a good start and, and try and win the thing. So, um, car's pretty pacey in those hot conditions, which is great. Um, yeah, it's going to be body hot out there for 78 laps. So, um, trying to stay cool as much as we can and, um, yeah, see what today brings. We know this new surface has got a lot of grip. How many starts have you done on it? Uh, none yet, so um, we'll just, well, I've had a look at you know, previous years and we've got a hard tyre and we've got a bit of data to go off, so um, yeah, see so how we go, mate. Any idea, I mean, we know the traditional strategy here from the Adelaide 500, is it going to change, you know, the pace is going to be a lot hotter, is it going to be a different strategy you need to win this one? Uh, you know, it'll be um, obviously less deg than normal, uh, you want clean air, so everyone will be racing for clean air, I think, and, and um, yeah, fighting for kind of track position, so... It is what it is. I've, you know, done enough so far starting up the front, so um, it'd be good to try and get a good start and, and keep that clean air in front of me and um, use it. Thanks, Cam. Good luck. Thanks. Lee Holdsworth, Dave Brennan was just walking back to the garage just to get a little bit more cool, if that's even a word, before, uh, before you kick off. Feeling a bit cool with the ice vest on there? Not cool enough, but I've got a good teammate here who holds my umbrella, so that's a great thing. Find a teammate that holds your umbrella. <laughs> Dave Reynolds, Unfortunately for you, disqualified during the top 10 shootout. It's not a total disaster, but obviously not where you wanted to be starting. Yeah, it's not ideal, but you've got to play by the rules. And um, yeah, it was just a bit of an oversight, but uh, yeah, you know, still got a chance to win the race from 9th or 10th or whatever they decide to start me at. So um, yeah, it's going to be just really hot. So yeah, I'm not looking forward to that part. We'll let you get some cool before you have to kick off with all the action. Well, Thomas Randall, I think you thought you were going to be starting 10th uh, after not making the shootout, but now you're 9th and picked up a spot. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we're pretty lucky, uh, considering it's been a pretty tough start to the day with, uh, obviously, my crash in, in practice three there, so gave the guys and girls at Tickford Racing a hell of a lot of work to do, and we nearly made it. I think we're about 15 seconds short, so, um, yeah, 
at least it gave the guys and girls you know time to just obviously check over everything between then and, and the race but um that no, felt felt okay on the on the outlap so yeah we'll see how we go it's the first time for everyone starting on this new surface so it's going to be interesting to see who is able to capitalize on that and um yeah we just need to have a good good outlap here warm up the tyres and the brakes and i'd just love to repay the team after after this morning's incident yeah i was going to ask you if you had a feel for the car but you had great speed all weekend so i guess the plan is to obviously try and get a bit further up the field You've got a bit of a strategy in mind yeah just get off the line and um i think the first stint well the first few laps are going to be pretty interesting uh, everyone's going to be vying for some you know better track position but I think we saw in practice three there wasn't as much well there wasn't too much tire deg so i think it's going to be a race potentially in the pits so yeah we'll see um see how we how we track on for the first you know five ten laps and um see how i'm feeling and i think by the end of the race everyone's gonna be feeling pretty pretty spent so it's quite hot out out here and hot for the drivers hot for the cars and um i hope we put on a great show for everyone that's that's come to the track today well, I'm enjoying standing under these Castrol racing umbrellas. a shame we can't take this around on the circuit. You've touched on the conditions, same for everyone, but it is going to be hard work out there. It's a long day in the Adelaide 500, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, I've never done this one before, so as a main game driver, only, you know, a 20-lap Super 2 race, which is very different. So, you know, if Gold Coast is anything to golf, this is going to be even, even harder and hotter. But, um, you know, our, our team physio, Brad, and uh, my trainer, Heath, have yeah, certainly put me in a good position, and we got on the ice bath beforehand, and... I think we'll all be using that ice bath a fair bit tonight. We'll let you get ready, mate. All the best. All right, thanks, Jack. Cheers. James Courtney will start... Oh, James Courtney. James Golding will start this one out of six. Season's best qualifying, mate. Backing up another top ten shooter after the Gold Coast. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, fantastic to see the improvement in the team and coming in halfway through the year is never easy, but we've just kept our head down, bum up, and it's starting to show. So really starting to enjoy it now and, and uh, just trying to make the most of it in this race ahead. It's a hot race. You're a fit guy, I know that. What are you looking forward to? Um, <laughs> not the heat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just try and go out and enjoy it. I think, obviously, long race, um, really important to get to the end and just try and keep the tyres underneath the car and keep it as cool as possible. Just coming off being in Vegas racing carts, it's pretty physical over there. This one's going to be physical too? Yeah, it's right. I mean, it's super physical in a go-kart, but a different kettle of fish here, high attempts in the car, so... You know, we'll just get in and have a crack as we always do and have fun. Cheers, Jimmy. Good luck. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Congested grid out there at the moment as we prepare for our 33rd race of 34 in the Repco Supercars Championship this year. The Velo Adelaide 500 is about to get underway. It's going to be 78 frantic laps with a couple of compulsory stops here and an interesting grid for a whole bunch of reasons. Cam Waters on the pole by a chunky margin. Shane Van Gisbergen a long, long way down the order. 25th position after spraying that lap in qualifying. A couple of other big stories in this field as well, which are interesting to unpack. So Scott Pye's done a mighty job to be able to get up there on the front row of the grid in the Toyota forklift entry as well. Anton Di Pasquale, who ran wide in the shootout down at turn 14 was lucky to get away with that to be on the second row of the grid james courtney consolidating what's always been pretty strong running here but for the first year when he first turned up here he had a ropey one and a couple of other guys had a difficult one mostert had a really troublesome top 10 shootout and i spoke to his engineering group down there and they were somewhat puzzled as well we'll look forward to seeing whether or not they've got a better race car than they had a quali car let's get back downstairs scott pye just getting strapped into his car got clear track ahead of him he is a local, although he doesn't live here anymore, but this is very much his backyard, Scott. Beautiful scenes in front of you, no other cars. How are we feeling right now? Yeah, I'm just super pumped to be here. It's, uh, it's so good. There's that moment on the grid before I get in every time where I just, I look at everyone sitting there on the fan, saying so much for turning up. It's, uh, it's going to be an amazing race, and um, yeah, hopefully I'm at the end of it, at, uh, on top at the end. So I'll give it everything I've got today. It's certainly been an up and down season for you. Do, you. do you see this as a very big opportunity for you? 100% it is. Yeah, I'm going to give it everything. 100%. Good luck. Thank you. Well, we're just watching Davey Reynolds strap into the 26 car. He's got a running out of time, actually, so we might not be able to have a quick word with his engineer, go, Al McVean. He's telling me he's got to go. Hey, quick one, mate. You lost a, a spot on the grid there with the, the rear wing. All good now? Uh, yeah, it's all good now. We just made a bad procedural error and we're paying the price. All right, mate. All the best. It doesn't take much. It was only 0.6 of a degree and uh, out is out across the boundary line so unfortunately that just pops him down the bottom of that top 10 group and i was alluding a few moments ago to some of the stories that are around 
who's where in the top end of this field and you stop and consider the situation for David Reynolds. You think about what happened with Thomas Randall early in the day. He's had a ripping start to the weekend. Fastest on Thursday afternoon. Car's been buoyant and quick all weekend so far and then when it mattered most, he ended up eating the wall on the outside at turn eight. The fact that Tickford were able to turn that car around so quickly and get it back out there. We openly speculated, well, it, they missed out by 28 seconds getting into the shootout, but we didn't think he'd even be out there for this afternoon. So let's have a look at our racetrack, Mark. 3.2 kilometres, 14 turns around here. You know it intimately well. Please describe. It is a bull ring. It's a tough racetrack. It gives the drivers no reprieve. And by the time you arrive down there through the fast chicane at one, two, three, up to turn four, great passing spot into four, Wakefield Street, and then through a series of right lefts onto the rundown into the famous turn eight, the fastest corner on the track, followed by the slowest corner that we go to anywhere in the country and in New Zealand. It is a very, very difficult layout and it is going to be physical today. You know it, Crompo, 250 k, 78 laps, it's very hot, hard work, but it has serious consequences, this place. The one saving grace is they came off the back of a hot event at the Gold Coast, but that was near a month ago. Typically, when you're in Adelaide, you're at the start of the championship season. You would argue that at the end of the year, you might Green be a much more match fit than you are at the commencement of the year. That might be in their favour, but we know that the cockpit temps are so high in these cars. And commonly we see cool suit failures where they freeze up and that would be a nightmare. Some of the cockpit temps I've seen are pretty spooky. Let's check out our starting grid. Cam Waters on the pole, 10th of 2022, 19th in his career. Scott Pye, season best performance, well done on the front row of the grid. Little mistake, turn 14, Anton Di Pasquale out of position number three. James Courtney Strong alongside him, position four. Andre Heimgartner, they made big improvements with that car. And for the second time in successive race meetings, James Golding in the top 10 shooter. Out. He's sick. Chaz Mostert, that car just had no grip when it mattered most. They did make a change. They haven't reversed it for the race. Todd Hazelwood next in the queue. Damage at turn eight for Thomas Randall earlier, but they've recovered. He's in the game, and David Reynolds with that wing infringement tumbled him down the order and missing out by a crazy tiny margin in his last weekend as a professional supercar runner. You have to feel for Lee Holdsworth. Uh, absolutely. Lining up alongside Tim Slade, Brody Kostecki, and Jack LeBrock. Will Davison is a surprise. He actually thought that he had done a banking lap that would have put him into the top 10 shootout. That wasn't communicated to him. And as a result, way down the order. Brock Fernie and Macaulay Jones, 17 and 18. Bryce Forward, Nick Perkett. Nick Perkett, another of the local South Australians. Nick's family used to work at the Elizabeth Holden plant. Big weekend for Holden, obviously, as the last weekend seeing the factory Holden runners. Commodores on the grid. Chris Pitha with Jack Smith in 23 and 24. And the controversial one, the one that was just unbelievable in terms of the odds, no one would have said ever coming into this event would Shane Van Gisbergen be starting off the back of the grid. It was extraordinary. A last minute mistake at the final corner in qualifying has made the series leader and champion last on the grid in 25th. On a lap where he was potentially going to shoot to the front, he only had one more corner to negotiate. Century Battery's overview of what we're dealing with. Brake rating around here about medium. That's come up a little bit because of the resurfacing. The bump rating is high, not because of the track surface, but because climbing over the kerbs gives the petters damper a heck of a run. Tire wear, well, we'll find out a little bit more about that one. And it's a short, sharp run, about 260 plus metres from the start finish line all the way down to the apex of turn number one. Energy is building for this one, Mark Beretta. Oh, Neil Scaping, you bet it is. The question is, did Adelaide want this event back? Have a look, there's your answer. Shoulder to shoulder here on the edge of the straight. And on the other side, two massive crowds everywhere. It is so good to see everyone is on the edge of their seat. Looking forward to this fantastic race, Neil and Scaping. We will have to keep a very close eye on a range of different people in this race because of where they've ended up lining up. Some are out of position. And that is Sam Potter bringing Cam Waters into position. And they'll be chasing every final millimetre. Scott Pye alongside. And the argument between the dirty and the clean side of the road will be a factor here. But it's also handy to be on the left side of the road as you get down towards turn one. It's already been a somewhat challenging day for Tim Edwards. He's had a damaged car, but he's got a car on pole as well. And what about the task for this guy? We've seen some classy operators in years gone by come from last to first. Charlie Schwerkolt pumping up his team. They're in with a great shot this afternoon. We've got a green flag. Green flag, green flag. The word on the street in Adelaide. 
Supercars are back. Ripping start by Pine. An even run as they make the shift into second gear. And Waters has got the inside running here. It's going to be a supreme battle to turn one. And Pye held out high and wide. Waters prevails on the run up to turn four, and he's got some margin. Then it's Pye, then it's Steve Pasquale, then Courtney Heimgartner. On the inside, it's Golding. A nice, clean start in the first four corners. And Van Gisbergen has hardly made a move. He's only been able to get one spot. But what an even start and a great run through the first chicane for Cam Waters and Scott Pye. Very nicely done. James Golding now battling with Mostert. And he's made a little mistake. Mostert's got the run on him. And this will be part of the story of the day. Can he get up there far enough before turn eight? There's a right-of-way scenario on the run into turn eight from 150 metres. And the car on the inside has that right-of-way. And Mostert on a cold tie glides it up to the edge of the concrete. Got away with it, but only just now he bombs it down the inside. And that's plus one for Chaz. Nice move. And he was able to cover on the way out also. So Golding wasn't able to re-attack on the way out of the hairpin. It's the two Boost Mobile Commodores in very close proximity there. A little gap on the opening lap now for Cam Waters. It was worth keeping the elbows up for Waters into the first turn. And that's now translated to nearly 0.9 of a second. Waters in control from Pi. Deep Pasquale, Courtney, Heimgartner, Mostert having moved up over Golding, Randall. Remember that for Thomas, he's exploring the limits on a car that took a significant bruise earlier on. Oh, big moment there for Will Davison. Massive. He missed the corner, was around the outside, and had to spear across the curb on the right-hand side. That would have done some damage, some steering damage. Now, Van Gisbergen has got to 21st, so we'll keep an eye on. We're seeing him right there in behind his teammate, Feeney, and forward. Looking for a run up the inside on Frosty, and he gets it done, shoves it up. Done. Next in the queue might be his teammate. He's tucked in behind Brock, and just in front of them, it's Bryce Forward. This is the run to turn eight, and this is harder in hot, dirty air behind a train of cars. Looking, listening. So we talk about Shane charging through, and he's just been able to put a move on his young teammate, Brock Feeney. But the guy who's made the most amount of ground is Chris Pither. He's up six spots up to 17, so very nice opening lap. Red Bull and Paul Carr slots up one more spot, so Shane Van Gisbergen now gets two for one in that deal. And down the inside now comes Will Davison after that moment that we covered off just a few moments ago. And he puts a move on Will Brown. The margin now 0.94 of a second. Waters over Pye, Deep Pasquale, then Courtney, Heimgarten and Mostert, Golding, Randall, Hazelwood, and Holdsworth's done a nice job to creep into the top 10 here as well. Meantime, Van Gisbergen now 18th from 25th. Yeah, beautiful start. And didn't look like he had any damage. The crucial part of that is getting through without damage. Feeney now faints a move, puts the nose of his Commodore down the inside of forward. Forward just wiped the left-hand mirror off on the left-hand wall. So forward in plenty of trouble there with Feeney trying to attack him. Now he's trying to crisscross, but he's actually hit him. And now Frosty going to move himself down the inside for turn seven. He's got him. So Brock was just battling two spots up the road, and he's been attacked by Mark Winterbottom and lost another spot. So that all started when Bryce got out of shape on the exit of four, ran wide, dragged the mirror off it, then checked everybody up and changed the rhythm of that group. And that's been costly. Meantime, Mostert faster in sector one. The splits across the track. Davison fastest in one. Mostert in two and three. So we saw Chaz quick earlier in the weekend, but in the top ten shootout, nothing happened. But that car's got some pace in it, and right at the moment, he's 3.6 seconds off the lead. With the fastest lap of a 22.62. Now that's surpassed by... Pi with a 22-0 now. So Pi just taking a little bit of ground off waters. Have a look at this. Those two cars at front were almost exactly line, line astern. And the way that they end up turning in here, bold by waters, wasn't it? Yeah, and Cam rushed in there. When you're on the shallow side of the road, by definition, it's harder to get through the corner. And that left Scott up high and wide, but he didn't want to back out either. He stayed committed to the throttle, left it up over the top of the curbing at two. Waters in the monster energy car and Pi on the outside. Here's the view from their rear bumpers. 
We're looking at Anton Di Pasquale on the right-hand side of the screen. On the left, it's James Courtney. This is from the pole sitter's car. You'll see Pi on the outside. He motocrosses up and over the top, crosses up out the other side at turn two and lives to fight another day. But that margin at the end of lap one was 0.8 of a second in favour of Waters. And it all basically happened from that start. On board now with Scott Pi. So just off the second start, second stage of the start, just had a little bit of wheel spin. You can just hear that. And there's the monster Mustang. Bang. He did a nice job to keep his rolling speed up, Scott Pye. And he had to do it because if he fans the throttle and tries to tuck in, he'll be vulnerable to the next in the queue, the third car. That's Will Davison. And that second crunch over the top of the kerb is the one that really hurts the dampers. Meantime, Van Gisbergen's faster in sector one. And this is Bryce Fullwood wide on the exit of four. Pluck the mirror back off the midi's electrical entry. And that is Bryce Fullwood. I beg your pardon, Brock Feeney in behind him. And that exposed him to Mark Winterbottom. So Van Gisbergen now 16th from 25th, and he's 11.6 seconds. So keep those numbers in mind as the race unfolds. New faster slap, 21.5 waters. He's got the margin out to just over one second now. So the critical thing for Van Gisbergen here, because he was in close proximity with Feeney, is now that he's passed him, he hasn't got a double stack drama going. So if the safety car comes out, he's not affected by his teammate. We're coming up to lap five. Simultaneously, I heard three drivers just say the same thing with different language. The tyres are feeling greasy. Ah. And that's exactly what they're going to have to deal with in these conditions. Davison, nice job down the inside. Nice pass. Diagonals it straight to the apex and gets it done. And in fact, has skipped away in the process. That brings him up into 13th position. Now, Van Gisbergen's on target to potentially stitch together a quicker lap than the fastest one we've got so far. And Heingarten has gone quick in the mid sector as well. He's up nine positions, up to 16th from 25th, Van Gisbergen, in six laps. So, they've done a brilliant job early with no damage. Technically, the compulsory pit stop window is now open if you decided to play that game. Nobody's dived in. I make a liar of myself. Nick Perkat's in. So, they've done that to take him out of the traffic and give him clear air and to put him back out there so that he can stitch together qualifying laps. So Perkat in the NTI mobile entry, car number two, the teammate to Chaz Mostert, and Jack Smith off the road. It's down at turn 11, so he's run into there, got out of there without hitting it. I'm just looking, is there damage on the dead side? Yeah, so it's actually got some damage, we think, when he get another shot of the front of that car. 1.3 so seconds mark now between Waters and Pye. In fact, make it 1.4, so he's just starting to open up some margin. And that now, 21.2 with that lap time. He's actually going to go faster again this time, Cam Waters. So we talk about this Dunlop hard tyre being used and the new surface for a big chunk of the racetrack, 75, 80%. When you've got that going, and you're trying to drive it and feel with you hurting the tyre. That's the left-hand front there that we think there's some damage on. You're trying to drive it and get a feel every lap for what you're actually doing to the tyre and how much you're knocking it around. And with Cam Waters right now, with a 1.4 second lead, he's just done the fast slap again with a 21.05. So now that he doesn't really have anybody annoying him in the mirror, he can get in his own rhythm and decide how much energy he wants to take from the tyre yep. and how hard he wants to push. And does he want to creep into the zone where you might lock a brake or trip awkwardly over a kerb? So he settles into a rhythm now, and it's a comfortable one above Scott Pye. Deep Pasquale is now 2.9 seconds off the lead from Courtney Heimgarten at Golding Mostert. But Chaz was showing good speed now. That's just settled ever so slightly. This is exit turn seven. Meantime, Van Gisbergen still in 16th, and it's 12 seconds now, 12.6. He's lost a second to the leaders, and that's the traffic effect. As we're watching Chaz down the inside on James Golding, and oh, what's James doing out there? He's a lot. He's battling to actually get that yeah, thing okay, stopped in turn. Just some power steer from a yeah. look at that to me. steering, There you go. Well, well called. Right. Here we go. This is the Jack Smith drama. There's the. Right-hand front suspension failure, steering. That would have happened yeah. back in turn eight or further back. There's been more to the story. So here's the reason why James Golding is bruised at the moment. So he's also wiped the wall, and that was the reason why Chaz was able to have the attack down the inside. 
and Jeff Slater is the engineer for car number 31 for James Golding. Now, Will Brown has also come in. That car has been very nervous to drive this weekend and locking a lot of front brakes. But, you know, we saw Mostert pass Golding, then Golding must have got him back again before Golding just hit the fence. Because Golding was in front of Mostert again just then. So that's quite strange because you said Mostert wasn't going as fast. That's sort of indicated with Golding going by him. Second win for Scott Pye, gone quicker in sector one on the commencement of this lap as they bring James in. When they bring the car into the garage, more people can work on it and uh, try and rectify any of the damage that's been sustained there. So that margin just crept down again, first to second, 1.2 seconds. So two cars in the pit lane getting some attention, Golding and Smith. We're watching James Courtney in fourth at the moment. He's 3.1 seconds from the lead. Looking at lap speed, Croppo. So Van Gisbergen, 21.56, that's his fastest. Yeah, but the thing that I'm watching with Shane, he's drifting from the lead. Remember I called it being yeah. mid-11s, then yeah. it was mid-12s. It's now 13.7 seconds. So in net terms, being in the traffic's hurting him at the moment. Either that or he hasn't got car pace. But I suspect it's just being buried with so many others. We just got one more. Just got to 12. But again, to your point, he got to 12th, but he's now 14 and a half seconds away. So who's his next victim? His next victim is Hazelwood. He was on the radio then. He sounded a bit animated, but didn't untangle what he was saying. No, I couldn't get it either. Cup watching Mark Dutton. They'll be thinking about strategy here and how they manage it. So he's running number one this weekend. It's the final weekend for the whole night play in the major competition and Triple Eight have been the official GM and Holden team since taking over from the Walkinshaw outfit who ran it for 27 odd years are giving them a sign off with special livery and a special number this weekend. Front bar's failing. Front bar's failing. So that's Shane saying front bar's failing. So uh, that's a consequence sometimes of crashing over the curbing here, particularly down at one and two. Scott McLaughlin's in the commentary box here with us. And Scotty, you know that if you just get it slightly wrong and overcook it and hit the curb awkwardly here, you can drag some damage into the car. Absolutely, if you miss turn one curb, you hit over turn two, potentially make the car airborne, it can damage that front bar. But we saw it a couple of years ago, I think it was 2020, he, he had a right front suspension failure over a curb as well. So it has happened for these guys before. Well, the last time we were here, uh, they actually had a failure. It stopped him up at turn seven. Yeah. Now, under investigation, 55 and 35. The message on race control from Motorsport race control Australia. to all teams. Five-second penalty to car 55. Breach of turn eight yield position instructions. OK, so that's what I talked about with the right-of-way situation before. So car 55 is Thomas Randall as we watch David Reynolds. And so there's a procedure that was in the driver's briefing notes and David comes out in front of Will Brown. Will was pretty hungry over the curb there. Certainly was. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's, uh, it, it, that could be a big hit on the, on the suspension and, and the car itself. And you can feel it, you know, through the bum of your seat. So five second penalty level levied against Thomas Randall. He's done a mighty job considering the damage on that car and not knowing what you're dealing with when you try and lean on it for your first fast lap and he's still running around in the top 10. They can easily overcome and strategize around a five second penalty. Fastest lap of the race belongs to Cam Waters. He got a decent margin. Scott Pye in position number two from Deep Pasquale, 3.9 seconds from the lead. The margin between Van Gisbergen and now 11th to the lead, though, is 15 seconds. So his position's improving, but his gap is increasing. Yeah. That's hard to fathom, but the reality is that the lead cars are going very, very fast. In fact, on the last lap, a 20.94 for Waters and a 20.97 for Pi. That gap has basically stagnated there at 1.4 seconds. So they're going very quick. And that stop easily covered by fuel, so Brock Finney takes his, drops him down the order, but it does deliver him onto some fresh air. The position on the racetrack for him is going to enable him to do some pretty decent speed. He's come out in front of Nick Perkett, we saw pitting early. 
Phil Davison's gone quick in the first sector, quicker than any other, and his personal best time in the mid sector here. So he could be on target and threaten that fast lap as we watch Shane grab another. Did you see how far back he came then? He would have been three, maybe four car lengths. He was definitely three car lengths back, and he just lunged down the inside. He didn't actually get through turn eight that well compared to the car in front. I don't feel like there's much wrong with that car right now. <laughs> but man, it doesn't look like it's too bad, does it? <laughs> Absolutely. It just fired straight down the inside, a really authority bold pass. It might What's this? It might turn out that uh, your front bar not quite working to satisfaction gives you an advantage. So he just diagonaled it straight down there. That's been one of the things. You think about Sandown and the run into turn one there and how strong he's been. So check it out from the chopper. That's a great from miles point. out. And it's no resistance tough at all to do. From Todd. When you're diagon diagon diagonal to the apex, apex there, it's, it is tough to do and hard on the brakes going down the gears there. Well, easy to lock a wheel too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Over the lines, everything. So a new fastest lap, Will Davison. He's done a 20.9. He's wrestled that away from Cam Waters. Because it's not a sprint race, then there's no extra bonus points. But very close to the number that Waters achieved confirmed there on screen for you. David Reynolds on those fresh tyres is also speedy out there in 20th at the moment. So that's up into the top 10 for Shane. And that took 11 and a bit laps to achieve. So the guards coming off here, no surprise that that thing maybe doesn't look like it's in concourse presentation condition after it got dragged along a concrete block earlier in the day. It had significant damage to it on the left-hand side, so of all the things that were going to stop that car, a little bit of a loose mudguard is the least of its issues compared to what's gone on. You think about some of the places we visited during the year and where Shane achieves his speed, He's so good in the late part of the stop where he's trail breaking and turning. It's been impressive, and we saw it just then on that shot. Will Davison comes in for the first of two compulsory stops this afternoon in the Shell V Power Racing Team entry. He'd only just achieved the fastest lap of the race. Not a lot of fuel in this early phase, so they deliver a little bit of fuel now. I'll have a lot to deliver a bit later on. It's 140 litres required in total today. Now, he comes out with a lot of fresh air around him as well. He'll use that to decent effect. Waters, meantime, still got a 1.3 second margin over Pi. And Van Gisbergen now up into ninth position, and that's 16.6 .6 seconds. And, in fact, he's just grabbed another spot. He's up into eighth. Rihanna? James Golding, unfortunately, back in the garage here. More damage than what you would expect in this car. Yeah, we, I just glanced the wall coming out of turn eight and then I lost power steer straight away. So the steering was still straight. It's just all the system's gone. So disappointing. Um, yeah, we we'll, we'll had a pretty good start, to be honest. We struggled a bit on the first lap. Tyres, yeah, we tried something with the tyres. I don't think it really works. So we're sort of trying to keep as many cars behind as we could and then once it got going, it wasn't too bad. But just really difficult out there with the track temperature and trying to balance the car with the bars and that sort of thing. And yeah, didn't get it right today. We'll do it tomorrow. I think the upside of his story at the moment is speed. Yeah. And he's been in the top 10 shootout now in simultaneous race meetings at the Gold Coast and here. And he'll be able to put the rest of it together. So he's given the wall a rattle at turn eight and that's damaged the steering system in the car. Will Davison here oh. now, is that the fresh tyres that they just put on that car? Because yep. that, if you're the right front on that car now, that's not good. That is going to be an absolute nightmare. And he'll For fortunately, it's a clockwise racetrack, so it doesn't do as much work. But that is going to be bad. Sorry, mate. And the problem is you've got to carry it for the whole stint. Yeah. And those stints are particularly hard work around this track today. Waters has gone quicker in the mid-sector and we're deep into the race for him to start putting up personal bests and sector bests. So on this lap, that's a long way in, isn't it? Well, you think we, we spoke about it. Nobody knows what the tyre is going to behave like on this new surface. We're working it out on the run. Everyone's being a pioneer. But looking at that, there's no degradation near. None. And driver's eye view from Cam Waters into one. Hopping over the curve at two, but not being too hungry. They do get some credit in the bank. And then race control monitors it very carefully. And if they withdraw too much and go into overdraft, they're in a pile of trouble. Turn four, short shoot, rev limiter. You can see the lights come up. And you can look for wheel spin lights and lock lights on the wheel as well. Shift lights again. He doesn't grab third gear, though. He leaves it in second on the exit of turn five, six. This is seven. 
hungry over the curb here and tries to open the steering as much as possible. Third gear, fourth gear, fifth, he'll reach sixth gear and then size up at 240 odd kilometres an hour, turn eight. And his margin's out to 1.6 seconds. And you can see P1 and the last lap time for him. And there'll also be a gain loss as Randall comes in. Now, he would have served that five seconds in the process there as well. The penalty for not yielding on the run into eight. David Randall's just did the fastest lap of the race again. It was a 20.7. He did a 20.6 just then. That's an impressive lap, Scotty, when you think about it. He just come in to put fuel in. Yeah, the benefit of clean air there too, Scapey. 17 seconds to the next car in front. So he's trying to make hay while he can to get away from Will in right some ways. Here, but it absolutely makes him hay against the guys right that haven't right pitted. And, and he's doing a fantastic job with that. So there's a few of them that are using that trick. They've been able to feed back out with no one around them. That pays a dividend later in the race. And those that are buried, that can hurt. So the interesting thing is Shane's up to eighth position, but where I reported initially 11 and a half second roughly margin to the lead, that margin to the lead now is 16.6 seconds as we pick him up with the number one on the car on the exit of turn three. Uh, so who's next in his gun sights? It's Lee Holdsworth in the Penrite entry car number 10. Lee and David were jumping in the ice bath in preparation for what was going to be hot, hard work, and they were talking a lot about high cockpit temperatures in those cars today. Compo, like you, I just watched with fascination at what Shane was doing. We thought he'd come in early to get out of traffic. I tried to bleed something out of Jamie Wink up at the start of the race without giving anything away. He just said they were going to remain fluid. And look at he's done. He's not intimidated. He gets people out of the raid. He just blazes on. Now he's got, what, five-second gap in front of him. He keeps finding clear air and punching out the numbers. So this is working beautifully for him. I'm sick of trying to second-guess what Shane Van Gisbergen does strategy-wise. Like Scotty McLaughlin is trying to guess lap time. <laughs> He's just giving you a little whack Thank there. you. <laughs> Thanks, Larko. Appreciate it, mate. <laughs> the thing is, they've got a fast race car. So what that provides is flexibility. So they've got the flexibility to either run and gun out there, or if they wanted to, they could come in and shoot for clear air. They'll know exactly where they are. There's no mystery in what they're doing at the moment. It's just harder for us to guess from the outside. I think mentally for some, for Shane as well, he's everyone knows he's fast. So sometimes they just go, well, maybe it's better off. I'll, I'll don't hold him up, let him go, and I can catch him again. But that's great for Shane. Everybody else has got to start putting the fenders out a little bit. Yeah, he's got through easier than I thought he would get through, Scott. That's been a little assisted by some that have made an early stop. So they haven't always oh, just been oh. an on-track pass. Reynolds. Now, Reynolds, we're just talking about his pace. Just talking about his pace a second ago and off the road at turn 11. So 11's proven no, to be get back with your rhythm. a little bit challenging. Let's have a look at the Whoa. replay. Oh, it cranked sideways on the previous corner. That's interesting. You don't see that too often, do you? Not at all. And in fact... It wasn't wall contact on the outside down there at 11. It was just clumsy. Ended up sitting it up from being sideways on the top of the curb and then just got onto the Velo signage yeah, out there. And then there was a bit of an Austin Powers multi-point turn to get it back out of there. I really think it's way more looser on the, on the outside of the track. You saw at the start of the race, you couldn't run side by side in many of the slow spots. It was really hard to turn the car. Dave's just made a little mistake there and been punished massively. 1.8 seconds is the gap between this man Cam Waters, and you see in the background, Pye. Scott Pye's keeping him honest. He's well within striking distance here at the moment. Courtney's bailed out from position number four into the pit lane. And the margin back to Van Gisberg is 17.8 seconds. And he's got Lee Holdsworth still firmly in his gun sights down here at one. Mark Winterbottom in as well. Just looking here. Can he get down the inside? He's almost there, but he's not. But he's got it done. See what I mean? Yeah, it's he's just really, ran wide. They, it's exactly. really loose, just yeah. off the line. Worse so, than before. Yeah, exactly. So what, what Scott's referring to there at turn four, Lee was a little bit wide. But as soon as he was a little bit wide, he got it out into the grey, and it's got no grip out there. And actually, Van Gisbergen really hadn't put a pass on him at that point. But because he was on the line, he was able to drive around the inside of it. I think in past years, Lee would have held that position. That's right. But it's just not, not, not this year. Bunnings trade power pass. We're watching Shane Van Gisbergen in car number one, the Red Bull Lampole racer. Has a sniff down the inside, thinks better of it, and then ultimately Lee on the dirty side of the road just has to yield. Here's the view from the attacking car. This is out of turn three. 
and he just backed away from it right here, but then it started to look good in the mid corner, and he used that position well to be able to climb up now one more spot. Deeper Squally in from position number three. So Van Gisbergen's now up into sixth. So Waters, Pye, Heimgartner, one, two, and three. And Van Gisbergen, 18.3 seconds from the lead, but he's in touch. He overshot slightly then, Anton. Just looking at the fuel loads, Croppo. Randall's put 82 yes, litres in. Go, go, go. Reynolds, 46. Winterbottom, 60. So it's most of the people have been in the late 40s. But there's a lot of disparity. Say, Will Brown, for instance, put 38 litres in versus Randall with 82 litres. So there's a huge disparity in car position and the amount of fuel that they've put on in the first stop. GT? Yeah, big overshoot by Anton Di Pasquale to the point where they'd actually jammed the spike in and it slid on the spike easily a metre past the spot that he needed to stop the car. And that delayed them getting the hose on. So although the stop time will be whatever the car was up in the air for, the actual fuel delivery will be less than what we'd expect. Yeah, so it was a chunky time there, so it was 10.6 seconds, and that overshoot can be pretty hard to manage sometimes, particularly on that concrete surface where the grip level varies between the asphalt of the racetrack. Great view from overhead. One point eight seconds the gap between Waters and Pi. Heimgartner drops it up into third now. We've got roughly half the field having taken their compulsory stop. The first car in the queue that has stopped is Anton Di Pasquale in 13th. Meantime, Van Gisbergen, who started in 25th, is climbing through the field as the championship leader. He's up into fifth, and he's got 18 seconds between he and Cam Waters, the race leader. And their last lap speed for Shane uh, was a 20.7, which is pretty speedy, and it's about the same pace as Cam Waters. So all of that margin that Van Gisbergen's given away is in the congestion. It's about being further back on the start line, dealing with all that traffic congestion in the opening laps, but it's now flattening out in a time trend between the two of them. 100%, but the other part of that is, remember, a safety car fixes it immediately. So straight away, if you've got a safety car, boom, you're right there. Anita's doing faster sectors. I think Van Gisbergen's actually going to do the fastest lap of the race now. I tell you, what's blowing me away is that this far into tyre life, that you've got Waters in the mid-sector on that lap alone just went quicker than anybody else. You've got Van Gisbergen's gone personal best in sector one. So is Mostert, so is Heimgartner. Tyres don't get better when they get older. No. The track's they rubbering don't. in. Track's rubbering in. Do you, leave, do, you, do you save your last set of tyres for as late as you can? This is a long time in the race, but you want to use your best rubber as late as possible because the track's going to be amazing. Uh -huh. That's 100%. I reckon that's the read of the race. So we were just talking about what you do. So you probably want to, want to as, as you can see, there's black marks, there's black tram tracks pretty much everywhere. So as that continues to evolve, and this circuit, the evolution, you spoke about it earlier in the weekend, Scott, it's just going to get better and better and better, and we're seeing it right in front of us. Now that's a uh, decent stop there for Chris Pither, who came in from ninth position. He's had a really good solid run this afternoon. It's his last weekend with Premier. Peter Gibra's outfit in that coat car. So first car in the queue again, reiterating, is Di Pasquale, and he's 45 seconds off the lead. Pitha rejoining, and he's going to rejoin in the middle of a fair bit of warfare here between Tim Slade and uh, Nick Perkat. Meantime, the, ga the gap at the front's actually got a bit stronger here for Cam. He's got about 2.3 seconds on this pass lap. Heimgartner's just done a personal best. 21 laps into the race. That's, so I remember I said in the Hino Hub, that I, and I spoke to a few drivers about this, I said, do you reckon the tracks peaked or is there more? And they all said more. Everybody said no, there's absolutely going to be more in it as we press on. And that's what we're seeing. Fastest lap of the race belongs to David Reynolds. He's made a little mistake at 10 and 11, wandered off the road. He's down in 21st position. Our race leader on screen, Cam Waters. 2.2 seconds to Scott Pye, who's done a great job today. A lot of friends and family here. He's one of the four Adelaide drivers originally. And it's a big effort for Team 18. Had an open day last week in Melbourne for that outfit. New colours on the car this weekend with Toyota Forklifts supporting the car. And he was over here at the back end of last week 
doing some promo work and talking up the notion of hot weather. Dick Pasquale, that was awkward. He ran very, very wide on the exit then of turn five. What's happened here? And well, he's missed the line. It's just, it's just straight away off that black line, and, it, and he's gone. Uh, if you're off those tram tracks, I, I, seriously, it's worse than I've ever seen. Yeah. Meantime, Van Gisbergen, guys, if you add sectors one and two for him on this lap, he's half a chance to snatch the fastest lap of the race. And they're on lap number 22. So he's stormed up into fifth position. Admittedly, there's been some stops, but it's been a great opening stint. We've been challenging each other with the question of where might he land in this race this afternoon while well, he's landing right back up at the sharp end again. To all teams, bad sportsmanship for eight car 17, exceeding track limits. Will Davison's getting a wrap over the knuckles for being too hungry over the top of the curb at turn two. And he's sitting in 13th position at the moment. Now, race control, give the drivers a little bit of credit to use up through the race over there. They don't distribute the number, but they'll give you a little bit of leeway. So you withdraw cautiously. What you want to do is get to the end of the race in a competitive position. That was close for Shane. That Probably was on the last too lap. Too close. Yeah. And you want to get into those last couple of laps where you then can be hungry and burn them up. If you burn them too early in the race, 78 lap race today, and we're on lap number 23, I don't want to have given those credits away too soon because you want to your back pocket in the last five laps when you go berserk over Rest the top of the curbing at two. teams, bad sportsmanship flag to car 25 for exceeding track limits. Yeah, see, that's same deal for Chaz Mostert. So on the 23rd lap of the race, he's now got a halo over him yeah. going, don't do it again. So if he finds himself in a vigorous battle on lap 76, 7 or 8, he can't attack down there into the braking area at turn four. That's him done now. It's just you can't you can't attack that curb and get that run into a crucial passing spot at the turn four. And what it does is it makes them vulnerable. Because if you've got to be a little bit slower through that one-two piece, then whoever's coming at you gets the lunge down into turn four. Yeah, absolutely. So they're in a they're in a world of pain. You certainly don't want to use all of your strikes at that point. Is that a piece of guard hanging off the right side of forward? I couldn't see what that was that was sticking out was, under the mirror. There was some damage on the right front corner somewhere. Yeah. So helmet okay, camera shot on the left front. Unfortunately, it's not the damage side for us in terms of a camera position. Five seconds, clear to go on the drop. That Bryce Forward Mitty's electrical racing Still entry. Still clear. Go, 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 go. Actually, it might have been a little bit of the mirror back. Maybe. Yeah, so that's what it was. So it wasn't as bad as we first thought, and out Bryce goes. So now everybody from position 10 through 25 has stopped, and everybody above that is still playing chess out there at the moment. And the margin, which we've been talking about between Cam and Van Gisbergen, is now steady at 17.3 seconds. So that's settled down a lot. Pies in for position number two. So key stop now for team 18 as Mostert gets much closer to the back of Heimgartner. So from second position, Scott Pye, Team 18 goes to work, replenishing fuel, water, and tyres. About five seconds. Come on, clear. You ready? Go, 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 go. Jack LeBrock in as well. Truck assist entry, car number 34. So it's been a great opening stint there for Scott Pye. He's in a competitive position. And he was only a couple of seconds away from water, so does he get much of an undercut benefit here, I wonder? We'll see. He's come out onto Clear Road. So he's, from an engineering standpoint, being managed by Richard Holway. He's played the game successfully over a long period of time. They put 64 litres of fuel in that car. And what that means for Tickford is they've got the benefit of hindsight. They can actually now play their incoming fuel load in the Monster Energy car in order to protect their lead, if in fact they want to do that. As Feeney runs wide, actually nudges the wall on the exit of turn 11. So 11's proven to be something of a challenge for a few guys this weekend. So that headbutt didn't cost him too much, but still cost him. The other thing I'm just looking at, Will Davison's played himself into this race, because if you think about how far back he was versus Deep Pasquale, he's only now four seconds adrift, and he put more fuel on him in the stop. So he's, done, he's got 44 odd versus 39. Mostert in from position number three. Heimgartner up into uh, second. Around 15 seconds. Well. No one. No Van Gisbergen faster mid sector no. than anyone else. That landed perfectly on the spot. Okay, all clear in the lane. Leave the jelly there. Don't worry about Robbie. Shut the door when you're ready. 
Okay, 10 seconds now, fellas, 10 seconds. We're all done, we're waiting on fuel. Lane is clear. Be ready, be ready. Go, go, go. That was Robbie Starr putting the, that new drink bottle in there. How many years has Robbie Starr been there? Over 30 years, I reckon. So great to have those sorts of people so committed to this industry. It wasn't that hard for him to pull black and white gear out because he had it when I was there. It's the same livery as you drove it. He's got a whole wardrobe full of it. But you have got a lot of driving suits from a lot of different teams, so that's a different story. I did take a photo of the race suit from that era. I sent it to him during the week and said, how about it? A couple more sit-ups on me. <laughs> Got a couple of suits before I was born too, Crombo. Yeah, settle down. <laughs> That's enough from you. You can go back to North Carolina. <laughs> Water's in. Here Race we go. Leader. So 14 seconds, the margin over. Hyden Gartner, let's go to Larco. Yeah, and while you're covering your stuff, Neil, see those tyres? You're talking about the tyres. I just saw numbers. They're seeing 150 degrees centigrade out there on the track. Now, while he's doing that pit stop, just come around here quickly. Here's the fuel. Here's his fuel going in. 140 litres up there. You can see the little level coming down, down, down. Now... You can put 140 in whenever you like, but the tank only holds 110. So you've got to do two stops. The smart play is to do a shorter stop at the end of the day. Now, you can see there, at an educated guess, he's probably put in you know, roughly about half. What you want to do is ship it out, do that timing to put him not into traffic. Let's see where he lands. OK, so that was the critical shot for us to be able to see where that landed. So they put about 60 odd litres in, so they just slightly short filled by comparison to high. And if anything, they just opened the margin. They, they should have put more fuel in then. They should have backed him right back to pie. So that strategically, Might they have could have been more much. aggressive. They could have been more aggressive on that one, and that'll help for the later on. Now, the other one, because you picked it up about putting the tyres on as late as you can. The problem that DJR have got is they've effectively put a really light fuel load in both cars. So for Ludo, Ludo would normally not go that way. Normally he would chuck a bucket load of fuel at it and make the last stop short. He was obviously chasing clear track, but yeah. he took a dividend with that. Yeah. That's a rabbit for Scotty now. He knows it, that he's got the less fuel, than, uh, more fuel than Cam. He just needs to stay with him. Hopefully, he can jump up and stop. Exactly right. Here's a news flash, guys. Oh, that was he's a big mistake fence. by Waters. Has run wide, and he's whacked the fence. That changes the game this afternoon, and Scott he's Pye gone. is all over him. There'll be damage on that car, and Pye runs wide. They're all doing their best to throw this one away. So Waters makes a mistake. Pie got, makes a mistake. Was Back there any junk on the road for Pie? Waters is trying to figure out what's underneath him now. Has he copped any damage in the process? And here's a news flash. Van Gisbergen is the race leader. Holdsworth is second. Can you believe the images that we just saw of these two? Here it is in replay. I looked up to see the end of this, running wide and dragging it against the fence at 11, which has been a popular exercise this weekend. Bang. And that's bruised it. Certainly now, has. And then the next part of the story was watching Scott Pye have a wobble into the final corner. This is the driver's eye view. So it all starts back here on the downshift to second, turns it in. So what triggered this? Was it too... Oh, it understeered. It understeered bad. He Bang. Didn't, didn't even get to the curb near no. And then Scott did the same thing at 13. He's wide, and he just said on the radio that it's really yeah. dirty offline. Look how wide he is. Man. That's a good save. That is a, a really save. good bit of car control, because that normally goes in the fence on the left-hand side. So he's gathered it up there. That's a great bit of rally cross work there by Scott Pye. Have a look at the witness marks and the damage. That Velo sign, what the Monster Energy sign from that Mustang at turn 11. Wonder whether the steering's straight. We need to get a look on that driver's eye just to see whether the steering is straight or not. I tell you what, the driver's eyes would have been wide open when all that was going on at turn 11. They would have looked like dish plates. Seven seconds, the margin between Van Gisberg and Holdsworth in position number two. And now there's only two drivers in the field that are yet to take their stop. We're on board now with Cam at turn four. Uh, it doesn't look oh, like... I beg your pardon, but, uh, I'm sorry, Mark, at turn six. It, don't, it doesn't look like it's down, do you think? Scotty, have a look. I, I no, that's that straight. That doesn't look like it's straight. It look, is it a right hand down slightly? A little bit. He got away with it. If he yeah. hit concrete, he was done. Yeah. 
So a real disturbance and a ripple went through the middle of that race all of a sudden. We've still got 50 Ooh. laps to go, but here's our race leader also chirping it on the rears, and he's run Snakes high and wide down everywhere. here as well. So I wonder whether the tyres have reached a crest or there's a temperature thing out there, maybe a bit of junk on the road, because all of a sudden, guys that don't make mistakes are making them. Yep. And the other thing, too, Most has just done the fastest lap of the race. How much has he just gained here? Oh, Up oh, the inside, oh, oh, oh. it gives Davison one. Gives him a little rattle on the right-hand rear. Bumps him wide, rounds him up. But he's done a 20.5 on the previous lap. Now Slade off. Wow, that's going fast, actually, through there. That's a huge moment. So we're seeing a heap of red cordial moments all of a sudden by about lap 29.30 in this race, Larko. Yeah, we're all trying to second guess what's going on with water. So there's Sam Potter, his engineer. He looks concerned enough, but let's ask Tim Edwards. Tim, you're listening on the radio. Team principal down here, Cam Waters' car. What's he saying about it? Well, he came on the radio straight after he bounced off the wall and said, it's all right, guys, let's go. All good? Yeah, he's fine. So, Tim, just quickly, we sort of anticipated this. We're starting to see the mistakes get in here. You get to the end of this race without making a mistake, half chance you're going to win it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, JC was saying his feet were getting warm on about lap 10, and he still had a long way to go. So, yeah, it's going to be hard for him out there. I mean, they'll all be getting the ice bath as soon as they finish this. So, you're right, there's going to be a lot more mistakes this afternoon. Thanks, mate. So, remembering that transiting the lane, about 23 seconds, and you've got to get your fuel in. And here's the big question I was about to ask myself, how much fuel do they put in this thing? <laughs> how hard do they work now to try and protect that margin? Garth? So there is a drama with the front any roll bar of this car. It was finding its way all the way to full soft and Shane was resetting it. So what they're going to do with this pit stop is they're going to actually dive under the car and lock the front bar at a setting and then won't be able to do it. So why the, one of the reasons they went long was to buy themselves enough time so that they could, while they're putting fuel in, that they could do this change and get it done. They also said, well, Shane just keeps going faster and faster, so we might as well hang out there. So they've actually managed to get that fix done and while it's still getting covered from fuel, put a huge amount of fuel in it. This is a strong strategy. Because they've got a quick car, I'm surprised that it was as speedy as it was with that roll bar floating around and it is essentially adjusting itself. But there's been nothing wrong with his pace. Thanks for the update, Garth. So Cam Waters is back in the lead. The whole field's now done. Compulsory stop number one. And there's been a gigantic fright for both Waters and for Pi, but they're still in the lead. Di Pasquale is third, Courtney next, Heimgartner, Mostert, and in fact, uh, Van Gisbergen has dropped back into the picture in 11th position, and he's still, what, he's 20-odd seconds behind as we pick up on Chaz. So what would have happened is with that little bump manoeuvre that we saw with Davison before, Chaz would have been asked to redress. So Chaz has let him back by again, and now Chaz has made that move down to turn nine. So that's why you, in terms of the confusion of where he was versus Davison after the original contact between six and seven. Now they've put about 78 litres of fuel in Shane's car. So you compare that to, uh, for example, with uh, Cam Waters, 60 litres of fuel in his car. You look at Scott Pine, car number 20, 60 litres went into his car. You look at Anton Di Pasquale, and it was only just under 40 litres in his car. So of key runners that we're talking about, a lot of fuel's gone into Shane's car. So just let's work that out, because the number that we had pre-stop was 17 and a half seconds. It's now gone to 21 point eight seconds so there's four seconds leaked out in terms of gap but he's put more fuel on so we'll work out for you what that net number becomes so definitely pre-stop it was seven and a half seconds that was prior to the cam waters and the van gisbergen stops and at that point we were remarking that the run through the field was extraordinary but the pace still wasn't quite of the leaders because of the track position. Now he's got some clear air again. We'll see what this does for him. Remembering that a safety car fixes all ills. So Shane's in conversation, and so is Ludo with Anton at the moment. Shane's saying that the car feels different turning left to right at the moment. That'll be dependent on what they did with the incoming tyres, and maybe there's some effect with the change to that front anti-roll bar on that car. Doing numbers here, there's sparks coming off calculators because we need to work out what the difference in the stop time 
because because of the fuel disparity between Waters and Van Gisbergen. It's five seconds, five or six seconds ish. All this is a little bit rubbery, but they're going to have to put about 21 and a half seconds of fuel into Cam Waters' car and into Van Gisbergen's car. It's about 16 and a half seconds. Yeah, and that's all a bit iffy. That's not really a technical term. That's based on our deep reckoning of what we think is going on. This is our race leader who's gone quicker in the first sector from a personal best standpoint. So this also raises the question mark, Scott, while Mark's just crunching numbers here at the moment as well, about what we talked about in the Hino Hub pre-race about the unforced error aspect in a big, hot, hard race like this one today on a new surface that's evolving along the way. When you see people like Waters and you see guys like Pye, even Van Gisbergen locked up down there before, we've seen a bunch of people do things that you don't normally see, and that's a challenge to keep that level of concentration and drive at the knife edge. It is. Up the, the speed is up this year as well, so driving on the knife edge, the tram tracks we were talking about offline is, 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 is so treacherous. But Chaz has done the fastest lap of the race, three laps in a row. He's just done the lap record, 20.2. He's flying right now. It's almost like his thing's lit up with the grip coming down on the track. Yeah. That's actually, that is, that, that's um, indicative because we couldn't work out what happened with Mostert in the top 10 shootout. The car was just terrible. Neither could they. <laughs> but you have a look. Just have a look at the contrasting colour of the road where the black lines are, where the racing line is. It's just extraordinary. I haven't seen the colour of a racetrack change that much ever. Hey, Gisbergen's going to threaten that quick lap. John quicker in sector one on this lap. It's an awesome speed shot through the exit turn eight. So Shane's done a 27.3 in the first sector. And the quickest lap of the race so far is a 20.2, one minute 20.2 new record for Chaz Mostert, who was the lap record holder coming into this event. There's magnets in the wall there on the exit turn 11. And having a look down here, we've got Thomas Randall having a big crack. Now I'm watching Van Gisbergen's mid-sector numbers, not quite as much pace as we thought we were going to see compared to, say, for example, Mostert, who's quicker in the mid-sector. But he's still on target for a personal best lap. He's sitting in 11th and he's 21 seconds behind. He is, however, carrying more fuel out of his first stop. So it drops him down the order and here he is on screen. Four laps remain. Race number 33, the Velo Adelaide 500. Slowly but surely bringing the curtain down on the 22 Repco Supercars Championship. It's been an intriguing race so far, where we had a great drag race start between Cam Waters and Scott Pye down to the first corner. And they stayed in heavy duty arm to arm combat for quite a number of laps, and the margin settled for a long time. And then we sort of got to this midway part of the race. We suddenly, like the error we just saw there from Bryce Fullwood down there at turn two, we've seen a bunch of drivers get themselves into all sorts of strife, including our race leader, uh, ran very wide down there at turn nine. And it's awkward hopping over the curb on the exit. And unfortunately for Bryce, he's down there in 19th position at the moment. That's Tom Feeney tucked in behind. Driver eye view now for Waters, pit straight on the run to one. Last lap for him was a 20.6. And his best lap speed of 20.6. Yeah, consistency is pretty fair. Exactly. So there's no tyre deg. But the, the good thing is that Scott Pye's actually made ground on waters here. And he's got less fuel to put in at the next stop. So your point before about Scotty using that as a bait. He's got a bait. He's coming at him. It's a strong performance by Scott Pye. But just to, to qualify that, it's only barely. So we're on our numbers, we're saying fuel remaining for waters is 21.6 seconds. And for Pi, it's 20.7, so it's right on the margin. The guy that's demonstrably different with his fuel load is Van Gisbergen. So he's only got to put 16 and a half seconds of fuel in. Oh, and the shell cars have got to put a massive amount in. Yeah. Yeah, so at the first stop, basically, Waters put 60 litres in and Scott Pye put 64. And a bit of how we map that is dead reckoning. 
So it's a, it takes into account, you know, the stop time and getting in and getting out. So we, we don't necessarily get an absolute fuel flow reading. What it means is it's tantalisingly close. Yeah. But it would have been, at that point, easy if Cam Waters drives away from Scott Pye, it's over and out. Oh. But he hasn't. He hasn't. Yeah. Pye stayed there with him. It's a great move by Mossad to, uh, to uh, turn nine here. That was a nice move, wasn't it? Come from a long Actually, way back it, also. It, Chaz has got a lot of pace. He's very fast. Turn seven. Riding here with Pi. Whoa. And he had to slide it out the other side. He wasn't thrilled about that because it just compromised the exit. Remember that he's in a serious battle here with the guy just up the road, and that's Cam Waters, and it's 1.3 seconds that margin. So he's hunting every tenth at the moment. He'll still be wondering what on earth. To all teams, bad sportsmanship flag to car 20 for exceeding track limits. Oh, Scott Pye. Oh. So Scott Pye right there on screen. He's going to get the message from Richard Holway that he's also out of credit when it comes to shortcutting and exceeding track limits at turn two. And it's an awkward time in the race for him when he's got the eyes on to try and catch Cam. And they've all got to keep an eye on a speedy Van Gisbergen down the order. Flag for uh, track limits, buddy. Bad fortune. Be careful, mate. Yeah, Have so a drink, mate. Richard Holway just providing that information on the radio yeah, then yeah, to copy, Scott copy, Pye. Copy, sorry, sorry. And uh, Pye acknowledges it. And it's important for that communication to be clear and short and concise so that everybody knows exactly what's going on. Van Gisbergen, exit turn three. And it looked like he was getting a favour. Oh, we've got a car in the wall again at turn 11, which has proven to be a dramatic location so far this weekend. And it's Jack LeBrock trying to get it out of there in reverse, and he's creating a smoke screen in the process. Safety car. So he's got it well buried in the Velo sign down there in the rubber. And now they're going to pit to take advantage of it. Now, this changes everything. Watch for double stacking. Who's got priority? So Di Pasquale will have priority over Davison. That's awkwardly parked down yeah, there for Jack sorry. LeBrock. Ah. And sorry, that mate. continues a trend that we've seen. In comes Waters from the lead of the race. Pye follows. Di Pasquale from position number three. Yeah, I got you there. Come through the You're not going to get all your fuel oh, away here. This won't down. cover off the mandatory requirement. So what this is going to be about is keeping one eye on the other guy and well, fueling to get your track position. And your pit garage position is going to be crucial here. Because Deep Pasquale, no, Deep Pasquale's crossed over in front of Waters. Deep Pasquale's already crossed over in front of him. And by the time Davison gets there, Waters won't be able to get out. No, he's oh, out, he's out, he's out, he's out. I thought he was gone then. No. Sweet. So, in fact, Cam might be a beneficiary here because of the congestion behind. Think about Scott Pye, because they have garage is mid-lane. It'll be harder for them. He's out. He's out. No. So, he's out of jail as well. So, how much fuel did they get on Waters' car there? 69 litres. So they actually got a fair drink into that car then. They did. They were in for a long time now. And I tell you what they've done with, with Shane, because they took so much previously, they've stuck 54 litres into Shane's car. And there's Jack LeBrock stranded on the exit of turn 11. He'll be really cranky with himself. That's pr no, proven that to be a real nightmare it's there. Under. And it sort of starts with not being it's able to turn in at 11. So. And the minute you're even a few foul wide of that corner, you're in the weeds. Even wide coming through into 10 and then into 11. It just su sucks you in there. And, and unfortunately, Jack got caught up in the tyres. It's very hard to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So thinking about the strategy of this, what, what you would do is you would fuel to the time it takes to rattle your four wheels and tyres on. But depending on the margin and depending on where you are in the lane. 
Great view looking out over Adelaide Airport, across the CBD, out to the coastline there. Chris Pith is actually currently showing as the leader. We're going to rattle through some numbers and try and get an understanding of who's where. Now, it's not about whether or not you've now completed your second stop. It's about whether you've been able to take all your fuel. And so uh, it's going to take us a little moment just to take a breath get our propellers spinning on our caps and get us thinking about this one. But it's going to be intriguing because there's a great little battle going on here and a few leaders in any direction is going to make a big difference with your track position and what happens now at your next fill. Because you can't, you won't have your 140 leaders on yet. Yeah, remembering also that in the perfect world, if you could, have you got me ready? if you could order a safety car, you'd order it about go, go, lap 41. Go, go. You wouldn't order it now. Yeah, you want to be at the critical lap where you're fueled to get back. Well, that that yeah. used to be our critical lap before it was yeah. resurfaced. Well, the car's down because yeah, the lap well, speed's so right. much faster, they're using more fuel. So it's three or four percent more fuel. Courtney came back into the lane then and filled up. He double stacked behind Waters there. Obviously, double stacking in front four. And uh, he's come back and put a little bit more fuel in the, in the next lap. Yep. So now they're trying. So the double up of this is the, is the double stop, as you were just saying, Scotty, to try to get to that 140. So they're all arrowing back in. That's Mostert doing that one. Van Gisberg, and I think you're fine, was the one going out behind Mostert. So that does line up in terms of their current track position. Now, there's been a lot more fuel put in a couple of these cars than you think. So, Scott and I were just looking at it now. I reckon Waters put almost 70 litres in on that extra stop, Lucker. Well, Scafie, we can crunch numbers all we like. You know, sometimes, as we say, mate, the best ways to look at it. And I can tell you, this race just got red hot. Here's a couple of towers here I showed you before. There's the 140 mark on Shane Van Gisbergen. He's not quite there. Feeney, he's not quite there. Come with me. Let's have a look at a couple of others. This is pretty cool. Down into Will Davo and Anton Di Pasquale. Where are we? Oh, look at that. He's not quite there. He's not quite there. Let's keep going. <laughs> Well, I, I think there's a double stop on who, who well, else has pulled up. Well, some of them are processing. They're yeah. trying to process fuel through the car by taking a second stop. They're feeding fuel through them and they're venting it. What, what's that, Larko? Well, that one's just above, yep. right? Yeah. Is that uh, that's uh, that'd be Waters? Hey, hey Larko, go and check James Courtney. This one's just under. Look at this. Larko, check James Courtney for me because on our numbers we're seeing that he's actually got his fuel delivered at the moment. There's James Courtney right there, mate. Look at that below the 140. Okay, right. so that yeah, which tells us that what we see sometimes in estimate isn't what is actually happening. But on my numbers that we see here, Shane's taken 132, Waters has taken 130, and Pye's taken 138 and a half. He only needs a sip at the next stop, in theory. Yeah, that's, I think you're, you're right. Those numbers that you just rolled out there, they're right. So the other thing, take all that away for a second because we've got some pretty lively action. And in goes Van Gisbergen, wheel to wheel with Mostert. So a little bump there at turn six between the two Holden retro liveries celebrating the final Holden race this weekend. They bumped and went straight ahead. So we're doing all these mad calculations and as we're doing them, two of the very best operators come together at turn six. Well, that one is going to change the complexion of the race and that makes it much harder work now for Van Gisbergen. And is there going to be any further conversation about that? So unbelievable set of circumstances and it kind of reinforced looking at it what Scott pointed out earlier that if you're offline even by a tiny margin it's really going to hurt here today because it just ended up being a lazy wobble off to the edge of the road after he got punted down there so Mark Winterbottom also high and wide at the final corner so we'll just park strategy for one moment our race leader is Chris Pither from Lee Holdsworth from Cam Waters from Pi look at the congestion and this is half a chance to breed a safety car when you see cars threading left, right and centre. Then from Pye, it's Deep Pasquale, Most at Heimgartner. Meantime, Van Gisbergen's gone back to 21st in that field. Hey, 
to think about. There's a lot going on. It's actually a really complex race. And, and the other challenge with this race now is managing your fuel to the end. It's not impossible if, if the track continues to show this pace, that's the replay from above of Chaz down the inside and Shane up on the outside. And just the tiniest little rub here is enough to send him into the rough stuff. No grip out there, locks it up and nudges the fence gently. No damage on the front of the car, but big damage on his track position. So he's now down in 19th position. So we jump on with Chaz and he is battling in here behind Anton. So. The track's been continuing to show pace and evolve, so you're going to have to make sure that you also stick enough fuel in to get to the end. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have to go into fuel save mode, and that'll spur the challenge being able to race people. Zero is the fuel number. So they were just talking fuel numbers fuel there. Numbers, yeah. already, already talking about fuel numbers. Adam DeVore there, so... He's saving a ton into four there. Massive, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. He's off the throttle there for ages. Yeah, now... I'm seeing that on our numbers, that Chaz has got 145 litres delivered to that car. Yeah. So he thinks he can make it. He thinks he can make it. That's why Adam's telling him to save fuel. Because I think the big challenge for him now, because all this happened right near that critical point, and we don't know for sure Sorry, what the consumption's going to look like through the back end. And the grip is improving, and so he's got some track grip available, the opportunity to make lap time. He can't afford to burn fuel. He is going to have to squish and squeeze this thing right through to the very end, if he can do it. Crompo, just to confirm, Chaz Moster and Nick Perkett both have their full amount of fuel in their cars. Nick Perkett did a double stop during that safety car. Yeah, OK, thanks for that, Bree. So that actually confirms what we're seeing on our numbers here at the moment. So Mostert has his fuel. We think that Courtney is right there, line ball. We'll probably get everyone in our lane to sight the gauges so that we can actually see what's going on. So we've got Pitler and Holdsworth have only done one stop. Leading contender who's done two stops is Cam Waters, but the fuel scenario is the really interesting part of the equation. He's got to go. He absolutely has to get past these guys as quick as he can. There he is. That may be down the inside of four, but he needs to go and pull a gap on Mostert. And that gap on Mostert. So Chaz is showing sixth at the moment. He's only four seconds off the lead. The margin between Cam and Chaz is only three and a half seconds. Race control to all teams. Badge fortuneship flags to cars nine and 22 for exceeding track limits. Nine and 22. Will Brown and Chris Pither. They've exceeded over the top of the curb at uh, turn two. And there was no case to answer I saw before, but the screen's changed already. There was one of the incidents earlier that, that decided race control was no issue. Down the inside, has a look there. Waters, and he doesn't get it done. He locks up and almost plants it into the back of Chris Pither. That allows for Scott Pye to get in the game here. They are nose to tail at turn 11. It is on. And Pye's come off 11 better. So he's actually going to run here. Can he sneak it down the inside? He's a little bit too far back. So Pye is trying to pressure Cam Waters into a mistake, and that little error there at turn nine was one of them. So just reconfirming that I caught a glimpse on our timing monitor. It's no further action between the Mostert Van Gisbergen question that was raised in that contact at turn four. They've looked at it at race control, nothing to manage there. Gigantic pressure here at the moment for Waters. He's got to deal with traffic, and he's got pressure from Scott Pye. He's dealing with a highly experienced and successful Lee Holdsworth, who in turn is battling with Chris Pither. What a great motor race. So the other factor that we haven't got into our world is Mostert, who is filmed, is on fuel save mode and has a clear strategic benefit over Waters. But he's got a curb strike. He's got a bad sportsmanship flag. So at the moment, Davison, Mostert, Pye, Jake Kostecki and Will Brown cannot have one more curb strike. Critical move down the inside there now for Cam Waters. It gives him some fresh air. Now it's Scott Pye that has to find a way to be able to round up Chris. Remembering that Chris is in track position here. He doesn't have to do these guys any favours whatsoever. He's battling legitimately in second position. Forget about strategy. He doesn't have to do him a favour. 100%. Sometimes that's one of the most frustrating things to the driver. You know that they're in for position. You feel faster and it's tough. Yeah, there's no, no doubt. Scotty, I as frustrating as that is, yeah. Chris is actually doing the right thing. Oh, he's he just absolutely, he's on racing. He's he's absolutely go. Yeah. 
If I'm Cam, I'm not saving tyres. I am blazing. I'm trying to go as fast as I can, not worry about tyre life, and just try and, and enhance this gap on Mostert. Well, he's got two things. He's got to get away from Pi, and he's got Mostert not that far behind. Yeah, exactly. So when you look at that number now, it's only two seconds. Two seconds between waters, and there's Mostert. <laughs> it's a big gap to pull. <laughs> 46 laps of 78. 33 laps remaining. And an intriguing race. It's not just about car speed. It's about the strategy of how much fuel's been put in these cars. There's a compulsory 140 litres. There are many of those cars that have been filled over and they're done. They're actually right. And all of our theory at the moment is based on whether there's no safety car. We're theorising that, OK, there's no safety. If we get another safety car, that changes everything again. But on our numbers, Waters almost certainly is going to have to grab some fuel. Pi, we're going to check and look at the site gauge. We're 100% certain that Waters needs fuel. Pi, I wouldn't want to call it like an election. There's only a litre and a half to argue here on our numbers. So we need to actually understand what that looks like. The Shell cars are going to have to come in and get fuel. Van Gisberg and I reckon is going to have to come in and get fuel. But Mostert on our numbers is good. Yeah, I totally agree. Van Gisbergen, we've got him as 132. His teammate Brock Fernie is 142. So completely different strategy being applied across those two cars. So Lee Holdsworth, though he's leading at the moment, He's not in the picture when it comes to the fuel. Water's a big question mark. Pi a question mark. Di Pasquale for certain needs to come in. Most at fifth is in great shape at the moment. Larko, please add. Yeah, OK, so I was up Waters before. Waters has definitely got to come in. I think there looked to be about 10 litres in there. Here's Scott Pye's right here. So there's the 140 label right there where the red tape is. There's his fuel there. I'm guessing that's probably about five litres. Right. Mm. OK. So we've got him at 138 and a half. We reckon that there was 10 litres to deliver to Waters, so that confirms it. So that puts... To all teams, bad water ship flag, car 26, exceeding track limits. David Reynolds is out of lives down there at turn two. And into the haste, we did verify that Mostert had... It was all there, wasn't it? Yeah. We've actually looked at the sight gauge. It's not just a theory. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just... Yeah. This is a full-on race for my first one, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's been a full-on weekend. Yeah. You want to go and have a little lie down? No, no I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> Grab a couple of beers if you want. <laughs> it's good fun. It's a great series. We have great racing. You've been a big part of it for many years, Scott. And we're watching Chris Pither just understeer awkwardly, Ooh. and he's eaten some concrete in the process there on the exit of Turn 7. Bang. That'll give it a... A fair wheel alignment as well. He's missed those tyres. There's tyres on the end of that wall. He's missed the tyres completely. You can see that wheel buckled, actually, as, as it was coming at us. Waters hunting Holdsworth. Goes for the dive bomb down the inside. And they'll be side by side here. This will be awkward on exit. Lee's going to have to climb over the kerb, and he ends up being displaced. Waters clears him now for the race lead. We know, based on what Mark Larkham just told us, he needs fuel. And so does Scott Pye. But on our numbers, Cam Waters needs about an extra 3.75 litres a second. So he needs about another second and a half of fuel. So it's a bees. There's not much in it, Larko. Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to take in information from everywhere, mate. Let's have a quick look on the graph why this is so critical where that safety car happened. We actually said the critical lap was going to be around 41. That's the earliest you could stop, fill it up and make it home. But what happened is the critical, sorry, the safety car came in on about lap 39. So those that filled it up, Mostert, Courtney, what have you, they're not going to quite and make it. What they're going to try and do, here's our fuel usage, 2.9 a lap. They're going to try and bend the curve a little bit. They're going to try and save a little bit of fuel all the way home to make it there. But there's a whole bunch of them we just showed you out there, five litres, ten litres. They're going to have to come in here somewhere to do that. That's going to be a wonderful moment. Can't wait. <laughs> the whole thing's been pretty entertaining. Thanks for the update, the Hino Hub. So, uh... Don't go anywhere, folks, is the message. Stay planted in front of your TV. We've got some great supercar action to unfold this afternoon. It'll be a bit of a nail-biter, this one. 
because what we don't know is what's coming across on the telemetry at the moment into those bunkers for who's using what fuel, how those drivers are coasting, lifting, whether they're blipping on the downshift, how much effort they're putting into a fuel save. Now, if you can save 100 mil a lap, a third of a Coke can, can make a huge difference in this game. For sure. And that part of the game is a real art where you're trying to keep the car pace up and you're trying to minimise the amount of fuel. All the little tricks that you play as a driver to be able to facilitate that is very, very hard and maintain car pace. Mark Winterbottom in, Tim Slade's in, Brock Feeney's in. Now, the other thing is, we got 29 laps of racing to come. This is not exactly over. There's a long, long way to go here. Safety car boards and Safety flags. car. We've got a safety car, and we rubbed the wall. Waters rubbed the wall on Pidicks exit there. Incident, turn 11, Another incident at turn 11, I heard James Taylor in the background, our race director. So does the replay tell us what's gone down here? Who are we riding with? Oh, that was the car in front. Oh, Shane Van Gisbergen, I've been told. It's Van Gisbergen that's parked it up in the wall. So that's the championship leader. Okay, so the second time today out. we've seen him in the Come wall. Around. Let's catch the safety car and let's not lose it. on the front of that car. Come this around. changes the game. The leader is behind you, so stay out. Wow. Wind Cup keeps an eye on proceedings. That's more than a bruise. Turn 11 has been a magnet. Water's back in, pie back in. They're, they're going to try and squeeze the fuel in that they need. And this is going to be a great battle to the flag. It's going to be an extra five litres required for this man versus this man. So they've squirted some fuel in. Pie might grab him. Do they get the Tickford car out? They do. They just get him out in front. What a great strategy play for Tickford. They watch the other car and they plug the fuel up when it mattered. How cool. Well done. That was very well done. And they were able to get him back out in front, which was a we're crucial aspect of how this is playing. Apparently I thought uh, dead well, set that Pipe got him. Yeah. Anyway, so so, and I reckon that Waters is now short fuel. So he's going to have to save like a maniac. But, but the safety car will help. It, that, well, exactly. Just meant to say that the second part is we need to work out what Deep squally has got going because he hasn't come in and he has not got enough juice. Did Deep Pasquale just come in? No, he missed it. Yeah. yeah. No, but he, needs, he needed to have topped up. So the other thing that we focused on the pit stop, but remember on that rearward shot on the exit of turn seven, we saw Waters actually rub that wall there as well. So we'll try and dig out that replay for you. So Davison come in under green prior to that safety car and made the next stop to get enough fuel in. This, this is what you're talking so, about. Yeah, he comes this? off this kerb, gas it up, and then bumps it against the fence on the way out. Yeah, he got, it was actually flush, so he probably got away with it, but would have put a mark on the rim. I tell you, there's some cars out there that are shark bit. There's a lot of cars that have got damage on the front, on the rear, on the side. So the safety car intervening again. Deeper Squally leads by 1.4 seconds. So, when we're going through this now, we're just trying to get our thoughts around. Uh, there you go. Might be a so radio that, drama. that might be a radio drama. Yep. So that's what we're. That's, that's the only exactly. reason that board's out because we yep. you don't have any radio. And because we were 100% saying that Deeper Squally needed to get in, and obviously didn't get the call or has got some communications issue. He needs to come in and put that fuel on because the guy right behind him, Chas Moster, has got enough fuel to get home. Did he get bumped? Did Van Giesbergen, was that with Reynolds? There was no bump from behind there? I don't think so. Gee, there's been some mistakes here at turn 11, hasn't there? Well, here we go. This is, this is gonna tell us everything. Now, we were on that shot before, and I don't think there was a bump here, because I, I openly questioned who it was that went in, because we didn't know who we were riding with at the time. So Shane seems to have done that. Now, he's back in and uh, they may take the opportunity to try and rectify some damage, Lago. Yeah, so just confirming, uh, Pi's obviously done. I've cited Waters' thing, uh, his, his field. He's done. I'm looking at Anton Di Pasquale. He's got to put about 20 litres in. And as you know, guys, once the safety car goes around once and then you pit, this is such a shame for him, this will put him way back. 
Yeah, so they're using a power saw just to clear all that damage. I figured that they'd use this opportunity to try and tidy it up. That's not going to stay there. That's not going to stay there. That's not going to stay there. Yeah, that looked like a band-aid for major surgery. Yeah. Not, not good enough. Not uh, quite fit for purpose, that one. Deep Pasquale, you've talked about already, but Mostert is effectively now our leader. Yep. We know that he's got fuel, but he's been fuel compromised. This is doing him a favour. He's got a fast car. He's in reasonable shape. Yep. Go back downstairs. Uh, just to confirm, Shane Van Gisbergen, you saw that damage. They cut it away. But the bigger problem is the actual front splitter is sitting up at the wrong angle, so it's going to have no front downforce. I watched that Anton Deepas drop quietly drive past his pit board. It looked like he saw what he needed to see. But now that we're going green again, do you actually want to come to pit lane? Well, now the field's congested. That'll make him last, won't it? So maybe, depending on where they're at in their current fuel, they might do what you're sort of intimating there, Garth, and just leave him there for a minute because you may get another safety car. Other things may happen. But Too I... much for my poor small brain to process at the moment. He's pitting. But I think the thing, Scott, is, okay, is the, the opposite effect of what's going on here is they should have put more fuel in earlier, straight up. Well, they only put 30-something in yeah, to start with. In both cars, basically. I know, so Mostert, who had his fuel delivered with a quick car, is in front. But his challenge from here, even with the safety car, he'll have to be very careful how he manages fuel to the end. I'd love to be sitting there looking at Adam's laptop at the moment to understand what they've got in terms of fuel to the end. Oh, dive! I died down the inside from Waters, and he went straight ahead at turn four. Oh, oh no. Now he's turned. Oh, no. Here we go. This will be another safety car. You're kidding me. Oh. So this we've got Hazelwood one. and Brown crash turn five. off the back of a Waters catastrophe. And this is going to be another safety car. Helps Mostert again. Yeah, so this is actually letting him off the hook. Yep. So he's got a quick car. Wow. This is wacky races this afternoon. It's still green. I, I, well, they gave them every opportunity to try and get them out before they throw a yellow. They may clear it. Down the inside comes Will Davison on Brock Feeney. Nice. Nice move. So what's happening back up there on the other end? So there is the Hazelwood car. That doesn't it's look like it's going safe, anywhere in a hurry. So the safety flags, car now that that shot's up is cool. Look at the margin. And there was a big lock-up in the background back yeah, five, there, six cars there, as well. There was. I'm surprised they didn't call that safety car earlier because it, it effectively didn't give me. all those lead runners a chance to get in. So watch this. Down the inside, big dive bomb by Waters down the inside of McCauley. He overshot and overran. And then it was awkward when they got back down here to the left-hander. Tags him in the middle about the B-pillar. That's Hazelwood followed by Brown. They get tangled up in it with heavy contact. So I think Cam might be in a bit of strife for that one. Hazelwood goes heavily into the wall. Oh. Will Brown got nowhere to go. It's been a tough weekend for him. A car's been nervous to drive, been locking front brakes, and it's been nasty in the rear end on turning. This is the view from Cam. And he has to go down a gear, scrambles around the outside, and then he's desperately trying to hang on down here at the left. Fires it back a gear and tags him. Yeah, he's got something to answer for there. Yeah, I think he's in strife. Yeah. Will was already wide going through there before before he made contact with Todd and just had absolutely nowhere to go. That's Brad and Sam watching down there at Tickford. Tim Edwards, voice. he doesn't have to say anything. We can read it on his face. No surprise that... Motorsport Australia Race Control is investigating cars 6 and 35 at turn 5. And uh, they'll be currently looking at data and replays up there to see who was the er and who was the E. So Mostert over Heimgartner over Percat at the moment. And then Courtney, then Fullwood, then Jones, Pye. The field's just so scrambled yeah. at but, this point. But it's the other thing too, I... I I think this safety car basically gives them an all-go. I, I think doing those numbers that Mostert doesn't have to fuel save. No. 
So if that happens now, it's actually a dead set sprint race with 25 laps remaining. And I'm not sure that there's anybody else in that league group at the moment that's got the pace to challenge him based on what we saw in the early part of the race and earlier in the weekend. The only thing that's been a black spot for him is the top 10 shootout. The rest of the time, he's had really good pace. Yeah. So it'll be, obviously, there's a couple of things to play, to play out. We don't know what's going to happen with Waters is currently ninth. Will Davison's probably got pretty good pace. He's been fast all day. Haven't really applied the right strategy across those cars at this point, but at least he got that last stop done before this safety car. So the communications issues definitely hurt Deep Pasquale because he was in a pretty strong position at the pointy end of the field. But now Mostert, who will have control of the field very shortly. Van Gisberg and a lot of damage on the right-hand side front there. So we saw him. Straight in. Yeah, we saw him up in the wall at turn four and then down at turn 11 as well and they've parked it in the garage. Remembering he came into this event with a massive margin. Looks pretty hot, hard work in that car there at the moment. And Shane will be looking at the timing screens in there to see what the complexion of the race looks like. That's turns four, five, six and seven. And you can see we've been talking through the weekend about the proximity to the CBD of this racetrack right on the edge of town. And the stricken cars there are at turn five. So Waters triggered this in contact with Hazelwood and then Will Brown had nowhere to go. So here's the replay. So this is Waters and the monster car down the inside of Macaulay Jones. Gets out on the dirty side of the racetrack and then drag race down to the left-hander at turn five and nails Hazelwood right in the midriff. And then Will Brown with nowhere to go tags the other side of his car. Here it is again from a different view. So this is where we saw it. He ran all the way over the top of the curb cab. And he tags it. And they're studying that race control oh. at the moment. And actually, you're right, Scott, because Will Brown was a long way from the race line there as well. 24 laps remain. Chas Mostert's the leader, and he's slowly being let off the fuel-saving hook in the Walkinshaw Andretti United entry. And that's the stricken car of Todd Hazelwood coming back to the lane. It's got a lot of damage on it as a result of that contact with Cam Waters and unfortunately with Will Brown, who is something of an innocent victim in the process. So the order you can see on the totem is Mostert, Heimgartner, Perkat, Courtney, Fullwood, Jones, Pye, Kostecki, Waters and Slade. Some of the fancied runners have had anything less than a handsome afternoon. And have a look at, on the totem there, those positions and the uplifts for some of those competitors. Perkat up 17 spots. Up to third, great job. Fullwood and Jones for BJR have done a great job. Up 14 and 12, respectively. So there's been some really good team performances throughout the field, isn't there? You said it's a jumbled field, but there's been a lot of really good work. There's been a lot of mistakes, a lot of differing strategies, but some really good performances through the base of the field. Brad Jones with, what, 22, 23 laps to go on this race. It's hard to know where to look and what to follow, but your team's very much played yourselves into this race. You've got three cars in the top ten at the moment. Yeah, I, I'd be much happier if the safety cars didn't keep on <laughs> popping up, except, well, the first one anyway. So, look, we, we've had a really good run with fuel strategy and the guys are on top of things. So um, now we've just got to get to the end, and that's not always easy. In terms of conservation with the fuel for the rest of this race, how are you guys sitting? Yeah, no, we're sweet. So there's no problem. We, we had to save a little bit. But that was expected, but now we're, we're fine. So it's all green, so we just got to stay out of trouble. We'll see what can happen. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, that's not always easy. We'll see. Thanks. So the teammates, Chas Mostert and Nick Perk, had a first and third at the moment. As Brad just described, he's got Andre Heimgartner, Bryce Ford and Corley Jones. His three cars are in the top ten. Jack Smith had some damage earlier in the day. Scott Pye's got a quick car. He's down in seventh. But what a safety car does is that it bunches the field and if you've got a quick car, it does give you the opportunity to get stuck back into it. So I would say that Pi will be a serious factor here uh, with the next group of cars around him, but he'll probably find some pretty solid resistance if he's able to make it to Courtney. We'll see what Andre Heimgarten has got for firepower. And there's been some history between Courtney and Perkat over the years. So they're third and fourth, so James will be working very hard because it's been a strong weekend for Tickford in terms of their pace. So Courtney will be trying hard to sneak by Nick Perkett. You can see that Q forming there in behind Mostert. 
Green flag now. So this is now the recommencement Green with 23 laps remaining. Stand back because this is going to be a ripper. A lot of racing to come. And we saw before that Mostert was able to skip away. He did a bad job. He was wide. He, he did was very a bad wide. job. So Heidgart is going to challenge him all the way down to turn one, but he's in an awkward spot, Andre. And he pays a bit of a penalty for being out there. But look at Percat trying to capitalise on this as well. So that was an awkward mistake on a cooled out tyre that had deflated somewhat for Mostert. And look at Heidgarten covering Percat, who in turn is covering Courtney. Then forward, then Jones, then Pye. Oh, he's, oh, he's run wide. Oh. Andre's run wide. They're all struggling when they go offline. <laughs> this is unbelievable. So it takes the tiniest of errors to compound into a major problem out there at the moment if you suddenly run slightly wide. And look now at the gap that Mostert's got. Pit lane speed limit investigation also for car number nine, but he's got bigger problems at the moment, Will Brown. So Mostert's got a half, a one and a half second margin already. After a bad restart. That he, was actually a shocker. He went a lot earlier than I thought. I'd limit the risk and go a little bit later, maybe the middle of 14, but Race he went control before. control to all teams. And, uh, Pit lane drive-through risk. penalty to car six for a driving infringement. That's Cam Waters. So that's the one that we expected would be arriving any tick of the clock. So Cam Waters, who's currently sitting in eight. Oh, another lock up here for Heimgartner. Waters comes in to serve his penalty. Trouble at the final corner. Brody's trying to muscle by Macaulay Jones and does so. Pick a spot on the racetrack. I'll deliver you some action. Yeah, because everywhere you look at the moment, it's game on. It's punch and counter punch out there at the moment. Mossed over his teammate, Perkat, one and two. Heimgartner's battling as soon as he goes offline. He's got no firepower when it comes to grip. I can hear cars sliding in the background and locking brakes. Caught me through. Forward looking for a sniff here. Heimgartner totally battling offline. He's drifting all the way back through. We asked the question, did he have pace? No is the answer. He's getting his ears boxed. He would have a heap of marbles on his tyres now. A heap. I didn't hear Andre's answer, but yeah, if he's gone wide, got all that dust and debris and rubber pickup on his tyres, he's got nothing to fight with. And look at this going down here in denied and trouble between Pi and trouble between forward and Scott Pi. One of the contenders is now nosed up to the wall. What an afternoon in Adelaide. Can you believe? Folks. Oh, sir, he couldn't script it. This is Supercars Reality TV. Am I a curse? Yeah, uh, yeah, what? The line is yeah. touch, mate. The line is touch. Oh, trouble here now for Feeney. Seriously, is there anybody out there that can stay on the black stuff? <laughs> we shouldn't be laughing. This is just unbelievable. My goodness me. What an afternoon. Every time we look up at the moment, somebody is in trouble. So if we take a breath, we've got Mostert over Percat in reasonable shape. Pi's day has turned complete custard, so he's Go back in the, the lane. So the Mostert, Percat, and now Courtney. Brody Kostecki's starting to be a factor, and he's been relatively quiet this weekend. So how much drama of that has that team had all year with Power Steer? It's just extraordinary. So here we go, looking back with Percat. And massive wheel spin there for Heimgartner. And he's out wide, he's got no grip at all. He's just been attacked from everyone. And Fulwood was actually trying to save him. Bryce Fulwood was actually trying to give him room and let him get back across. It was you awkward here. This. It was awkward, Scapey. Look he's how slow Bryce is with, with Andre here. And he just can't turn in, Andre. And, and he was actually given room by his absolutely. teammate. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And we're hearing on the radio, Pi saying he's got no power steering whatsoever. So then the run down to turn nine, forward on the outside of the middies electrical entry, side to side contact, probably hurt that left front, which in turn hurt the steering for Pi. Yep. And I can there's actually a see there's a flame, there's an oil fire underneath that car because it's hurt the power steer. On board now with Scott, we'll listen. Ah, uh, have a look at the Straight force. Away. You see the force of the steering there. Oh. And he would, at that moment, oh. when you've done all that work today, to qualify on the front row, to race at the front, to be a contender, and there's that feeling, and it's a horrible in the gut sinking feeling. And it happens so fast. Yeah. So fast it happens. 
And there's the car in the pit lane. What a disaster. We said this afternoon was going to be brutal. There was no way I would ever forecast for it to be like this. This has just been unbelievable. Meantime, the seas are parting here for Chas Mostert. So he's just should be theoretically cruising along without too much pressure. He's got cover from his teammate. James Courtney is in third. Brody Kostecki is in fourth. Then Slade in fifth. Let's go to Mark. Well, we're trying to work out why, aren't we? Heat, stress, dehydration. I can tell you this. We said about 150 degrees we've seen on tyres on the track. They're over 100 degrees centigrade when they come off the cars. I've seen cabin temperatures well up into the 60s. Hotter than we've seen, hotter than I've seen. And the track temperature is 53 degrees centigrade. I mean, it's all working against them. And ain't it great? <laughs> <laughs> You're a sadist. So, under investigation, Bryce Fullwood and Scott Pye down there at Turn 9, also from... Uh, race. Now, Brad Jones just sent me a text. Heimgarten is cramping. So the uh, reason he's battling is that Andre's cramping. So he's, you know, he's out of salt. He's, he's, a, out, he's a out fit of guy electrolytes. Too. He's a fit guy. And he is a fit guy. So uh, that's what's going on with the R&J batteries entry in the fast Kiwi. Thank you, Bradley. What's that? Gee, it's rubbered up there. If you just take that snapshot of uh, turn five, the amount of rubber that's right on the line. Yep. Stretch out those arms. 18 to go. Yeah, so he's dropped all the way down to ninth, and he was sitting second at the restart. We asked the question, is he going to be a factor? Can he get in this game? He's actually... I reckon he's got more than cramping going then. He didn't even Race need to put his hand back on the teams. gear lever there. Pit Coming lane through the corner. Penalty to car 14 for a driving infringement. Yeah, so Bryce Bull was going to be pinged for a driving infringement for the incident down there at to go through this turn nine with Scott Pye. You're going to drive through, please. That's the Midi's electrical car. Pye's out of business, unfortunately. The Toyota forklift sentry. Richard Holway, his engineer. I tell you what, they can be proud of their pace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They they have done a mighty job this weekend in practice, in qualifying, in the shootout and in the race. And he probably just ended up being slightly in the wrong spot at the wrong time, Larko. Hey, let's have a quick look at this Waters Hazelwood incident because I tell you, I reckon this one was marginal. Now, we know to affect a pass, you've got to get up to what we call the B pillar. Right there. Here's Waters here, right? Now, you watch as we go into the corner. I'm going to go frame by frame. Look at this. Now, the tur at the turning point. Now, I reckon the turning point is right about here. So maybe not quite there, but I've got to say, just behind this tree, as they go to turn in, look at that. You know, seriously, that's... Oh, that's... Oh, you know, look at that. That's. I, let's just come to the other side of the tree. Check this out. I reckon this is pretty unlucky. Look at that. Yeah, but you, you were doing that stuff for years, Larko, down those sorts of bump-offs. <laughs> maybe left front was locked, maybe, Larko. That was probably the only thing that Beardo might have that's seen. That's a good point, Scott, uh, Scotty, because that's what Beardo looks like. Is he in control as you affect the overtaking manoeuvre? And they do have data. They do have extra tools that we don't necessarily have. So, uh, busy afternoon here in Adelaide, folks. We've got another one to come tomorrow. Move down the inside, Lee Holdsworth on Thomas Randall. 16 laps remaining. Lost its our leader from two and a half seconds. Now this is serving up an interesting possibility because coming into this weekend, it's a big emotional moment for Walkinshaw and Andretti United because they've gone back to the retro livery for the original Holden racing team of 1989, 1990, 1991 and the black and white and the lion and the helmet. And they represented Holden for 404 rounds coming in here, 187 wins, 274 podiums in 27 years as the Holden racing team. They may be on target this afternoon to deliver a 1-2 in a very big and emotional moment for that team at a very special event. At an event also where Nick Perkat's dad and granddad worked at GMH out at Elizabeth. Yep. Yep. I'm really frustrated and disappointed Scott Pye back at the garage. I, I, I don't have words, I'm just sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm so sad. Here's what it is. The rest of the race, you've got the pace in the car, which is, which is what you need, the silver lining you can take out of this and bring in for tomorrow. Yeah, I just, I wanted to, I just want to win so bad. Like, my hometown and um, I'm gutted. I was obviously trying quite hard to come back through. We got unlucky not being able to get the fuel in. 
and I was pushing Cam at the start. I think our car was mega, but same thing happened at Sydney. It was a light touch, and I think it's blown another power steering hose. So that's what ripped the wheel out my hand. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow I'll just try again, but thanks everyone for the support. It's been amazing. This whole week has been, been surreal. You've got glassy eyes, I can see. I mean, what, what does this race mean to you? Yeah, it means everything. I got my mum here today and um, just gutted. Thanks, Tom. That's tough. It's a uh, cruel business and even cruel when you've got a quick car and you're playing a good strategy game. And they're hard to come by. They're gold nuggets in motor racing when you've got a good car, when you know you're set up for potential opportunity to capitalise, and when it gets ripped out of your hands for whatever reason. And the problem is that not very many hours after the race, nobody remembers the sad stories. They just look at the result sheet. Very true. I often say what a cruel sport it is. And it's been a cruel day for Scott Pye and Richard Holway and all the team down there. They were right in this race. They were certainly in contention. And the smallest things car to car at turn nine and all of a sudden you're out of play. Now tell you what is also lighting up here, it's 0.7 of a second between Courtney and Percat. So the possibility of a fairy tale one two is seriously under threat from James Courtney at the moment. Yeah, he's actually very fast. He's been coming at Nick Percat for the last couple of laps, been looking at that in terms of those numbers. Yeah, there it is. So you can see that He's making big gains at the moment on Nick Percat, who's come from nowhere. He's up 18 spots. You can see it on the totem. He said to me earlier in the weekend, I've got no feel in this car. It's not responding logically, but he's currently sitting in second position and potentially on for a podium, but he's got 14 laps and a big arm wrestle with this guy. James Courtney, turn nine. The shadows are starting to lengthen now, so the track grip will be coming up where the track cools out in a few spots. The temp is still well and truly up. The breeze is up a little bit at the moment from the southwest, and we're going to see some pace. So, for example, Macaulay Jones on the last lap just did his personal best in the race. So it's going to be a big pressure run to the chequered flag. On board with James Courtney. This is a good shot just to see the relativity of these two cars and understand they're just actually saying on the radio that you've got a couple of track limit things you've got a couple up your sleeve from what they understood did i dream it or was it earlier in the day that we heard that mostert was out of lives yeah, no, over Mostert, the curb yeah, he's gone yeah, yeah he's gone around lap 35 I yeah, think. yeah exactly so reynolds davison mostert five over and out Jake Kostecki and Will Brown. Right, he's also in strike. So 33 on our weather station in the broadcast compound and uh, west south westerly at the moment, about 20 kilometres an hour. Point being that in these last 13 laps of the race, there'll be a little bit more shadow here and there, particularly up in the East Terrace and Hut Street areas. Oh, this is Ooh. awkward. That's an awkward awesome. interlock between teammates, between Thomas Randall and Jake Kostecki. And they don't need any more damage down there at the moment. And this is even further around the same lap, and I think it's a return of serve. I think you're right. Now, don't don't cross to Tim Edwards. No. Ooh, 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 ooh. Who's this out here creeping around the outside? That was Macaulay it's Jones Macaulay. the TRG transport entry. I tell you what, you picked it up real early in the play, Scott. That you run wide today. It's like some of those street circuits you deal with in North America. You come out of the groove, or a place like India, if you're out of the groove, you're in more strife than the early settlers. What it really affects now is someone like Courtney, who is actually pressuring Nick, it's going to make the pass even harder. The, the inside running is, is not going to be as grippy as, as the, the pure racing line, and trying to get a big braking manoeuvre is going to be even, even harder. So the big challenge is that in order to make a pass, you've got to do something that's non-standard. You've got to get off the you've ideal racing line. You've got to go bold. So you're going to have to try and find a place. It doesn't look too bad down the inside at nine. No. no. That, that, that's been a good spot yeah, today. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and James, his, all his middle sectors have been pretty strong. So that's probably where I'd expect him to try and make a move on Nick. 
It was a cool shot. The arrived depart shot down there at turn eight. So Courtney just having a little sniff, a little gulp of fresh air in the front of that car. Remember, he's ingesting a pile of heat from the preceding car. It's going into the radiator. It's going into the brake ducts. It's going onto those front tyres. So it does affect performance. That gap that you can see, 3.2 seconds, Mostert to per cap. And then it's nothing effectively between the next two. It's half a second on the computer. You can see how tight it is. And then it's a fair margin, then back to fourth position, Brody Kostek. I'm looking at the two cars. They achieved their speed quite differently between Courtney and Percat. James is trying every trick in the book now to flow the car as well as you can make it. Comes through this right left section of change of direction. It does look like Percat's car is very strong in this piece. Puts power down nicely also using different lines. So Courtney drags it inside that major bump on the right hand side. Ryan Walkinshaw and Bruce Stewart looking on as the management of Walker Torrance Ready United. I'll bet the sweaty palms for Bruce at the moment because uh, this is a, a big moment. They've had some great results. They were runners up at Bathurst with Chaz. And if you go back to the Gold Coast, it was a third and a second for them. So they've had form, but it's actually a while ago. You've got to go back to the Northern Territory, 18th event of the championship season when Chaz last won a race. So there's a bit riding on this together with the emotional stuff that I spoke about before. Jack? Yeah, Ryan Walkinshaw, the Walkinshaw name has been synonymous with Holden for over 30 years in Australian business and motor racing. This would be a fairy tale result in your second last day racing for the General. Yeah, uh, I don't want you to jinx it, Ozzy, because we've still got 10 laps to go and, uh, and Courtney's having a pretty good crack and Kostecki's still there with what we think are fresher tyres. So, uh, yeah, we're hoping there's not going to be any safety cars, hoping it stays green and that we can have a bit of a fairy tale ending to our time with Holden. The team's done an epic job today. I mean, Nick's strategies help get him into position. Chaz's car's been speedy at times. It's, it's nail-biting. I see you're a bit nervous, but it'd be a fantastic result, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm not a religious man at all, but I might be praying to someone deep down inside. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed uh, we keep it clean, keep it green, and, uh, and have a good ending. Let's just have a quick wander around the back. I want to show you these T-shirts on the back here. They've got all the famous results starting 1990. Win Percy, Alan Grice. Can't find your name on here, Crompo, but I think Scafies would be on there a bit. Jack Perkins talking to Ryan Walkinshaw about the romance of the Walkinshaw 1-2 right now. Tim Edwards, your man, James Courtney, is trying to get up there and spoil the party. Yeah, he is, but yeah, to be honest, I'd just be happy for JC if he got a third place and for the guys on his car, you know, they've had a really rough half, latter half to this season. So, you know, I think he's got the pace on Nick, but I don't think JC's going to do anything to risk that third place podium. Maybe you don't know JC as well as I do. Um, you guys have had fast cars all weekend. Do you feel like potentially this one may have got away from you? Oh, 100%, you know. You know, shame for, for Thomas this morning, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we had three cars in the top ten, in, you know, for the shootout. So, you know, that that's a big tick of the box for us as a team. And, yeah, I think, you know, we without the, you know, obviously we didn't get that fuel and in that last stop, you know, we didn't have room to get it in. We got as much as we could up the hose, but couldn't get enough up, so... Ifs, buts and maybes, you know what it's like, it's motorsport. But I think, you know, it's encouraging them. We've got really good car speed, so we have another shot at it tomorrow. I was going to say, the good news is we're going to have another crack tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. We'll try and finish the season over the win. Thanks, Tim. Cheers. And these two cars out there at the moment that we're looking at, Thomas Randall and Cam Waters, are sitting in 11th and 14th position. They're also... Uh, under a bit of pressure at the moment, certainly in the case of Cam for exceeding track limits as well. So he's got to be a little bit careful as he tries to figure out a way to round up his teammate. Is he going to get down here? He does. So clean move down the inside there for Cam Waters. So that recovers up one spot to 13th. That might be a South Australian thing for James Courtney because the last time on the podium for him was at Tail and Bend. This so could be something in the air or the water here for him if he can keep it rolling. And you can see that. I think, if anything, Tim was kind of willing him to not have a lunch. Yeah. And you just bring it home straight. That's please. a team boss, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do any of that race driver yeah. stuff. <laughs> so it's been an amazing race turnaround. to all teams. Bad sportsmanship flag to car five for exceeding track limits. Ooh. So James Courtney's got no more lives. Eight laps from home. He can't get too hungry over the curbs. I was about to make the comment that it's... Quite a decent turnaround here for both the teammates in the WAU cars for Chaz Mostert and also for Nick Perkat. Remembering Chaz qualified seventh 
and everyone shook their heads, including Chaz and, and Adam DeBore's engineer. And for Nick Perkin, he qualified 20th. So for them to be one and two has been a big racing recovery for them. And Aaron Noonan shared this stat with me coming into the race today, that in terms of the number of Holden wins over the years, coming into today's race, Triple Eight as the factory team had had 189 wins, and HRT under the Walkinshaw banner had 187. Yeah. So if they win today, it's going to be 189 plays 188. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, it was like well the dueling teams because the releases came out early in the week from both of them, and I read those numbers. I thought that could be interesting. It's a lot more now. Yeah, that's right. Going into tomorrow. Yeah, it puts a little bit of extra bragging power in it, one way or the other. That would be uh, nice and comfortable if you get a bit of that cold air on you down there at the moment. I think uh, there are a few drivers that could have had a bit more cool air on them today just to calm things down. Now, the margin between second and third is steady at the moment. In fact, if anything, Nick's been able to just open it up ever so slightly. Brody Kostecki's done a nice job in recovery as well, up nine positions into fourth position, and neither of the Boost Mobile cars have been particularly strong this weekend. It's been a bit of a challenge for them. So when you look at the top seven or eight, Mostert up six, Perkett up 18, Brody, as you said, nine, Slade up seven, Winterbottom, good job, up 15, Feeney up 10. Will Davison, who had that drummer in qualifying, was he was 15th, so he's up to eight. So there's been some good drives. There's been some really well executed strategies at the same time. Frosty was quick earlier in the weekend. Mark Winterbottom in car 18, the Irwin Tools entry, uh, and then didn't get the best run in qualifying. Had a problem up in turn four. But for him to creep back up into the top 10, so something of redemption there for team 18 after what happened to his teammate Scott Pye a little bit earlier. Tim Slade's got pace out there at the moment as well, so he's showing personal best cumulative after sectors one and two. So we're just showing you the margins through the field here, gap to next. Most it's got a comfortable 3.3 seconds now. There's no question mark over the fuel. And it looks as though his teammate has got this in hand. Six laps remain. Check out the gaps back to Brody. There's Kostecki in fourth, then Slade fifth, then Winterbottom. That could still change. That's quite a battle, followed by Feeney, then Davison. Andre Heimgartner and I got a report from his boss that he was cramping, followed by Holdsworth and Reynolds. Then it's Macaulay Jones on screen in 12th. 13th here is Waters after the wildest of days, followed by Randall 14, Deep Squally 15, and Jake Kostecki. And then another gap here back to 19th and Chris Pitter in the Coke entry. And then the next car is Shane Van Gisbergen, and he is 20th. Seven, uh, I beg your pardon, 13.6 laps down. And uh, a wild, wild weekend for him so far. But it doesn't matter in terms of the championship, but uh, wow, what a day for him. Unfortunately for the subway entry for James Golding, he's back in the pit lane here. There'll be some tales to tell tonight, and there's a lot of bruised cars out there. So there's going to have to be a lot of overnight work to be able to turn them around and get them ready to do it all again tomorrow. We'll have another qualifying session followed by another top 10 shootout. Then we've got another 78 laps and that wraps us up for 2022 for the Repco Supercars Championship for our return to Adelaide. So it's been a gigantic afternoon, team. Wow, we've seen some stuff. I'm going to ask you to a very powerful question because you're both very commercially savvy. HRT has never had a 1-2 here. So, do you slow Mostert down and run him along over the line as Perkat Mostert one two for HRT on a tribute weekend for Holden? I, I get it from the standpoint of the poster, but if I was running the show, I wouldn't touch a thing. Well, Courtney's not too far back. Oh, that's right. Like, you could give, give the win to him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If you got too fancy, the man from Snowy River might grab you. Just, yeah. just take it. You don't just play take it. You don't play that? No, okay, just take it. Okay. Okay. Scotty and I are aligned on All this right. one. All right. Because the record book's going to show one, too. And you could probably uh, Photoshop the poster later. Yeah. <laughs> the technology's pretty good these days. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. <laughs> All right. Did you boring the two of you? Yeah, You're yeah. not risk takers. No. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> oh, you're having beer, we're having water. <laughs> <laughs> 2.9 seconds is the gap between Mostert and oh, Percat. Okay. Half a second is the gap between Percat and Courtney. You can see it. James is not going to let him off the hook at all. He couldn't care less about the notion of a 1-2. And I reckon he's completely ignorant to the notion from Tim that it'd be oh. just a nice thing to sit there and finish third. That's no, his team, he's, isn't it? He's programmed to kill. Yeah. yeah. That's what his job is. He wants to get that result, and he'll do what it takes. And that's his engineer, Sam. And uh, his partner, Teague, have just really had a good, new little league. No. Kobe. He's been a little bit unwell, so they, they've had a couple of challenges just in the last few weeks, but the good news is all is well on the family front. So if Dad can bring home a trophy this afternoon, that'll be good news. And this bloke has driven so well. You look at the pace. Ooh, that's, that's got a, that's that's got a scrape on it. It's, on there for, it's been on there for a while. No, this is new, mate. This is fresh. No, the that, one on the left-hand side, oh. the, the red one, that was from the wall up at the top at turn six. OK, but in my eyes deceiving me, did it just rub against the wall on the right-hand side just as a recent replay? I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> that's the other side. So oh, no, that yeah. one's been there for a while, but the one you just picked up on the way out of turn 11 is a new one. Just a normal day out in Adelaide. Yeah, yeah this, this, that's what's happened there. Yep. It's a bit late in the game to be rubbing the wall on the exit turn 11. <laughs> I was about to make the point about his pace. That's Feeney going off. So Feeney was having a dive there before. Remember, we saw him battling with Heimgartner. It's also got right hand front. That looks like it might have been in that tyre wall too. Yeah. It's the same damage. It's the same look go, as Van Gisbergen's. That moved Will Davison up a spot into seven. With what has gone on there with Brock. And Brock's a little bit vulnerable right now to Andre Heimgartner, who's not at his best out there so something of the walking wounded for those that are getting to the line with three laps to go so I, i'm still cavitating about the notion of Mostert running it up against the wall on the exit of turn 11 because turn 11's actually had a few serious magnets in it and it's eaten a couple of cars this weekend it has there's no doubt about that and i'm sure everybody that little thing that come up out of Debore radio that would have been mate calm this thing down I, I, what, what do you reckon bruce stewart and Ryan Walkinshaw were thinking when they got the replay. Yeah, I reckon their ECGs would have been fun to watch. Exactly. They might have been uh, planning that team photo scape here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. So some rally cross action here for Brock, who's bowled wide between 13 and 14. He did a really good job to try and keep it off the green stuff at the end there. But he dropped the spot in the process. Here's our race leader. Two and three quarter seconds is the margin over his teammate. Now, before he bumped the fence coming out of turn 11, I was about to make the point that he's done it today on genuine pace. Oh, yeah. Fastest lap of the race with a 20.28. He did that three laps in a row too, Scapey. Yeah. He, he was flying in that middle stint. So I went and interrogated Adam after the shootout and went, what? And he said, oh, well, honestly, we, did, we don't, we just somewhat bewildered. They had made a small change and I said, are well, you going to take it out? And he went, no, we're leaving it because we don't think it influenced performance. But this thing's been a rocket this afternoon. 100%. So where did the pace go in the shootout? But remembering, and we've been talking about it all weekend, their, their one lap pace has actually been two lap pace. So the, the way they got in to be the fastest car was doing it on the second lap. They have not done a lap all weekend off for one lap. Yeah, good point. Hey, it looks nice, boys. I, we used to, there was a guy called McLaughlin. We used to look over his left shoulder a bit and see that the wheel was just neatly turning in and hitting an apex. And These are not, cool laps. Yeah, they are, aren't they? When you're in control, yes, the heart cool rate's laps. low. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, these are cool laps. Yeah. And the world's around. yours. You're looking yeah. around and whatnot. You're thinking, why is for all the rest of those blokes they keep telling us it's so hard? <laughs> yeah. One lap remains. 3.2 kilometres for Chaz Mostert. Gorgeous shot from the Century Batteries chopper through one, two and three. You can see the picturesque Adelaide Parklands and the run to turn four. Hops gently over the kerb. He's got 2.6 seconds in hand. Ryan Walkinshaw closest to camera. Oh. And it is Bruce Stewart who's having heart failure alongside him. Turn seven. So he's halfway through. There's only seven to come after that. And at the moment, his teammate is hanging on in Nick Percat. Through the treacherous turn eight for the final time. He's ticked that box. Into the braking area now at nine. 
he's not demanding too much of the tyres or the brakes. Now he's got to elude the Bermuda Triangle at turn 11 and get out the other side of that one. Done. Done. <laughs> we're good, we're good, we're good. Here we go. <laughs> Into the last couple of corners now for Chas Mostert. And the Red Army, you're going to dig this one. Out of the final corner. And it's going to be a very special, a very emotional, a very cleverly crafted race win for Chas Mostert and for Nick Perk and his teammate, James Courtney in third. That's a big result. That is Great massive job, for Holden fans. The Holden fans with a tribute HRT together. livery to have a 1-2 at one of the biggest events on our tour. The resurrection of this event has been extraordinary, but the resurrection of that team on this weekend from a poor qualifying today and for them to be able to put those two cars at the pointy end is fantastic. Sure you can see me all those Holden people around the country, they will be celebrating everywhere. Last win was up in Darwin mid-year. Might be something about the sunshine. It takes him to career victory number 21. And that's been a beautiful afternoon's work for Chas Mostert. Victory number five in 2022. Here's the shot, MS. <laughs> there you go. Here's your shot. You're happy oh, now. You. There's your poster. No Photoshop needed. There it is. Uh, and you can just Photoshop a couple of their grinning heads in the middle of the windscreens there. There we go. That's a lot yeah, smarter. Happy. After the check of the yeah, flag. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys win. Yeah. You win. <laughs> the, the, the risk mitigation brothers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The killjoys. So uh, that is uh, one very happy and emotional team down there. They're on the move next year to Ford. And I rattled through some of those stats a little bit earlier and you picked up on another one because it closes them right up to within one race victory of Triple Eight as a Holden team. So there's a lot of pride at stake when it comes to the battle of the brands and the battle of the teams and the battle of the drivers in this championship. Here's our unofficial results confirmed for you for our 33rd race of the championship season and home by a little less than two seconds. Chas Mostert over Nick Perkett, James Courtney, Gets on the podium for Tickford in an emotional and wild day for those guys as well. Brody Kostecki finishes in fourth. Slade, Winterbottom, Davison, Feeney, Heimgartner, Holdsworth, and then Reynolds just outside. Shane Van Gisbergen down there in 20th position, and uh, Will Brown. Scott Pye, Todd, Hazelwood, James Golding in varying levels of warfare this afternoon. Per Tech victory lane, though, belongs to the Holden Lion this afternoon. And this man, Chas Mostert, together with his teammate, Nick Perkat, and that is a fantastic performance. A beautiful drive, exquisite execution. There's a bit more of your photo shot. Yep. Adam DeBore, he'll be pleased with that one. He'll be feeling no pain at all at the moment, Chaz. All the business about it being hot and sweaty will not matter at all. Let's just soak it up. Fabian Coulthard down there as well. James Courtney jumps in and congratulates Nick Perkat in the process. Chas Mostert, victory number five in 2022. And remember, that's also helped his cause in the championship battle he's got going with Cam Waters as well, because there wasn't much between them coming into this final round. And looking forward to the conversation between Chas and Jess now. Well, Neil, it just feels like the Holden Gods were shining down on us here today at the Adelaide 500. The first time ever Walk on Shore and Dreddy United have had a 1-2 here at the Adelaide 500. It just feels like it's meant to be. Congratulations, Kathy. Just talk to us about the emotions of this moment. Yeah, it's my first win here as well, so it's super exciting. Um, good old classic fuel race. Who knew that was in the store? But, yeah, I struggled with the car most of the race, to be honest. It was pretty edgy out there. Had to get my elbows out with a few people, um, but yeah, it was it was a tough race. Did you think you could win it today coming into it? Uh, you never say never, 
But starting seventh, you always think it's a little bit harder. But um, that's a good thing about these 250k races. They, um, they never pan out what you think. So, um, so good to get a one-two for the team. So good for Nick after the year he's had. Uh, just hard work and dedication and so cool to see. A lot of tears in eyes of your team. You see them all here lined up. What did it mean to get out of the car and be able to embrace them and, and really share this moment? Oh, just the last eight laps. I'm like, where's the finish? Where's the finish? But, uh, yeah, look, um, obviously got another job to do tomorrow. Uh, the most important thing is fix up the cars for tomorrow and rest, and then tomorrow night I'm sure we'll celebrate. You look pretty fresh, and the car was an absolute jet out there. How does it bode for tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we got some work to do. So, um, yeah, it was a little bit edgy for me. Uh, probably pretty good for a quality car, but didn't quite go for well for the race car, so we'll tune it up. Congratulations. Thanks, yes, yes. We'll come and have a word with Nick Perkat back on the podium for the first time since Sydney last year. It's been a pretty rough run for him, so I can only imagine what it means as a local South Australian boy to be here on the podium in Adelaide. Talk us through the emotions at this moment for you. Uh, first off, it's my engineer Adam's birthday, so pretty uh, handy birthday present, but to farewell Holden in a one-two for WAU with these liveries is what I used to watch as a kid and why I love the, the, the team and HRT and credit to these guys. Uh, no, Mobile One NTI racing car was it was fast, not quite as fast as Chaz, um, but yeah, it's just amazing to have the event back. Um, wizard strategy, pitted extra time on the safety car, and yeah, it was just about looking after tyres at the end there, and yeah, amazing. A big thanks to everybody who got the event back. Velo for being amazing sponsors of this event. Like the the crowd loves it, the GA loves it because they can actually see the racing. So well, well done to you guys. You didn't make a mistake today, and to your point, the fuel strategy was perfection. There's no avoiding the fact that you've had a torrid year. It's been really tough, and I can only imagine that your confidence has taken a little bit of a knock. What does it mean to be able to pull in here into Pertec Victory Lane, to go to your teammate, stand there on the top of his car, look out to all the people that have supported you right throughout your career to know that you're back in this moment? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, no credit to the team. They never lost any faith, and um, Chaz has been, honestly, the most amazing teammate. Uh, I've been, chips have been down and yeah, even last night to a point near he picked me up and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just what a, a good team does. It's not a rivalry between us, it's we just want one-twos for the team. So uh, yeah, absolutely amazing in front of home crowd. Um, I said if I got on the podium it would probably be better than the, the Bathurst win because I wasn't actually driving the car. And a one-two with these liveries is, I'm going to say it's better. Go and soak up the moment. Congratulations. No worries, thank you. And we'll jump in with James Courtney back on the podium here on what is an incredible day at the Adelaide 500. Congratulations. You were hunting Nick down there towards the end. I've got to tell you, everyone in the garage was saying, just hang on, JC. Just make sure you get there on the podium. What does this one mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot. It's been, uh, we've had a chaotic couple of weeks for a family and, and you know, a lot of drama coming into this. So it's, uh, it's been unusual leading. Uh, you know, you've seen what's happened to us over the last couple of months in the races. We've had, you know, this thing's been torn up so much. So I uh, can't thank the guys enough. The amount of work they've put in and to bring the Snow River machine home in third was, was awesome. It was great racing these guys. Um, you know, congratulations to these guys. It's, uh, you know, one, two is fantastic. But uh, we'll tune her up tonight and see how we go. But it's, uh, yeah, Jess, I had such a good time. But the track was so sketchy. And you know it's bad when the championship winner fires it off a couple of times. So it's... Uh, yeah, trying times, but uh, we'll have a tickle. Everyone's got panel damage um, and everyone's got a war story, but, uh, yeah, it's great to be third. Yeah, tell us what it was like offline because it looked pretty hairy and it was all about who could minimise mistakes. Yeah, it was wild. Like, you're half a tie with wide, Jess, and it was, like, you're in the wall, you can see here. Um, I was dicing on that restart with Brock and, and um, got a little bit wide and then um, her up the ties, and that's when Nick got past me, so that's where the second place went. But, uh, but yeah, look, it's... You know, everyone's trying to manage it and it's just how hard to push and how, you know, and what to save. And, uh, yeah, well, obviously we did the calculation right and came home third. Sure did. A bit more in it for tomorrow? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, it's just more me, I think. Um, that was bloody hot out there and, and uh, the footwell was, was pretty toasty and, and um, you know, it was pressure the whole way and it was great racing, Nick. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good day. Great to see you back on the podium. Go and celebrate. Thanks, Jess. See you guys. Cam Waters started that one from pole position but came home 13th. Cam, clearly a very, very tough afternoon out there. Just tell us about your day. Started good, got a good start, led half the race. Car was an absolute jet. Uh, obviously, the strategy stuff um, happened. We just got that safety car. In the two-lap window, we didn't want it, which hurt us. And then, um, yeah, car was super speedy, so it wasn't too phased by that point. But, yeah, obviously, lunch McCauley and then, I don't know, 
which car it was. I think it was a truck assist car. Decided to turn in for what and um, left me no room. So got a drive through for something I don't think I deserved. Tell us about the race.